Hello everyone! Welcome back! It is Wednesday, it is Zweihander Day, I am your friendly neighborhood Prax. Welcome to the channel. We are here to see what happens. We're gonna go around, let everybody introduce themselves, say who they are playing. I get to play our wonderful dwarven artillerist Nethra Fusefire, and she now has what she really loves. Shit tons of cannons! All of the cannons! Give me cannons. Um, or give me death. No, give other people death. She Give her cannons so that she can give other people death. That's, that's how that works. Um, and, but underneath me, that's a great transition. Thanks, Billy. I appreciate that transition. Um, to the wonderful, fabulous Billy. Hey, yo. Hey. Um, yeah, I'm stoked. Uh, it's, it's a thing where, you know, we're going shopping, boo, boo, boo. Uh, which is a, a big, happy, fun time for all adventuring parties. Unless you happen to not have currency, in which case you better have a rogue. Wait, um, wait, are we going shopping or are we supposed to have done the shopping so we don't die? It, it may have been a miscommunication. Second one. Second one. <laughs> Sweet, we're turning this into a three-hour shopping episode. That was I, not what I had, had planned, but I may I have it. misinterpreted. Um, <clears throat> I'm good with we, either. But honesty is uh, the most important thing, and you know you can always count on me uh, to be honest about fucking up. Uh, I fucked up. Uh, I'm happy to be here though, and we're gonna have a great time. We will indeed. We will indeed. And speaking of other people who we're going to have a great time with, hey, Laura, how we doing? Doing well. Going to try to, you know, talk in a little bit of a longer form manner to give Billy time to pull up his uh, player's handbook and look at those armaments and um, Armor. weapons. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, I will be playing Gisela Haberman, the human previously god sworn of Sigmar. Now, unknown, interesting, hooks, hooks, thoughts, thoughts. Um, but no, got my, you know, tear up. So excited to play with new toys. Um, I did go shopping and Gisela will finally be rocking full armor and not the uh, beat up armor that she had before. Don't say shots fired as if it was I. She bought more than one thing. Like I have no weapon upgrades. I have no anything else. I just took new armor. So, um, do I need to stall for any more time, or should we pass it off? Uh, to Pope? I think we can. We can post it off to Pope. Uh, I'm they... long winded. Yes, <laughs> and I've almost passed a level one improv class. So... There you go. I appreciate. I that. teach improv class. Uh... Look. That means it's a perfect transition to the improv master, uh, at least on this floor forum. Hey, Pope, how are you? Hey, everybody. Doing well. Pope here, Pope World Ball on Twitter, Pope World Ball on Twitch. I lurk in all your streams. I'm glad to be back with this Vihander crew. We have longly retreated, and now we have to actually make a stand. Um, welcome to the Alamo, folks. Uh, I forgot my coonskin cap. Um... But yes, it is it is good to be here. It is good to in the omnibus of or trade paperback as everything in my mind goes visually through comic book. Um, having the the single issue omnibus for this one, um, Aldar Ravenheart Vampire Hunter, um, as we have leveled up. Uh, I am looking forward to that becoming a thing and getting to use my new tools uh and also yeah new tools i i i get to have more than two swords a rondelle and some hope um so we'll we'll see what what aldar has chosen to go to war with um hopefully it's enough to keep him alive Look, he, he's going to war with Nethra, who has a shit ton of cannons now. Yes, but I 
I don't know precisely how many undead they are using. That's what I we just have Gisela how... for. She blessed all the I... cannons. It's fine. I know how many I can take I don't at a make time. unlimited armor. Or I don't make unlimited ammo. I cannot make you bullets. You still have a very limited number of lead things you can fire at them. But yes, but but if you bless the cannon barrel, then I when I start running out of cannonballs to fire and I just start firing nails and grape shot, still blessed. A bit more of a mess, but still blessed. I, I am going to slow this entire game down because I am taking the weapon with the powerful trait and I am going to make Tom make all the toughness rolls today. Okay, I vote for this. Um, hey, speaking of Tom, how are you? How are you feeling? How's life going I'm, for you? I'm good. Are we, or we're just skipping Billy? No, we Billy, Billy went before everybody. Yeah, did yeah the whole Billy embarrassing okay, yeah, Bill, where I... We, we, we got, all right, I'm doing well. I'm Tom T.P. Grant. Uh, I am the GM for this evening. I am excited for our um, three-hour shopping episode finale, simply titled Logistics Wins Wars. Um, but it is a true statement. Yeah, yeah. I hope everybody is ready to inspect food packets to make sure they haven't spoiled. Um, <laughs> I think the Russian army has something to say about this. Uh, yeah, they learned this one the hard way. Um, so, uh, yeah, we. I'm doing well and I'm ready to jump in if everybody else is ready. Mm -hmm. um, we closed last episode um, as the party has, in fact, made the long retreat all the way from the abbey um, to the uh, army encampment, pursued along the way by all manner of undead beast. And um, now finally coming to inform the arm. Uh, I'm sorry, I had a cat literally trying to climb my leg just now. <laughs> Um, all right. Yes, no, you have all reached the army camp. You have informed them of the impending doom of both the army of the north descending upon them and a force of undead closing in from the east. Um, and we're going to start tonight's episode with a slight time jump forward as the episode ended with uh, you all having met General Vell convinced the general quite handily of the fact that the that the undead threat is quite real and impending on the general declaring that we should that there should be effort made to contact uh the forces of the Ulricans to begin immediately negotiating some sort of truce Turns so out it's hard to argue with an undead head it is hard to argue with the fact that Gisela and the rest, while driving a tank, stopped to collect the, the head of a large undead creature uh, and plopped it down on the table in front of everybody. It's always an effective uh, persuasion strategy. So we are going to jump forward um, about four days. Um, everybody is able to return to the top of their um, health track. Uh, everyone is able to uh, clear any injuries they have so long as they didn't require surgery. And I don't believe anybody required surgery. And everyone has been able to, within reason, swap out a few weapons or armor um, as you spent your time, uh, a significant amount of time in the uh, Talpheim uh, military encampment uh, and were reconnected with the Vermilion Spears, your uh, mercenary unit that was, or your free company that was working with the Imperial Army. Um, now, we find ourselves slightly to the north along the road leading uh leading away from Talbaheim to the crossroad or I'm sorry the river bridge city where this entire war originally started about 20 years ago halfway there's um a slight hill and upon that slight hill sits a small 
nestle of tents. Flags, uh, the white wolf of Middenheim, the eagle of Altdorf, the stag of Taubeheim, and a few others, and a white flag of truce flying above all else. A few troops mill about inside the largest tent. General Vell has just invited the four of you in. You enter to find General Vell seated at a table with only a few individuals. Uh, you recognize uh, the nobleman Adrian Crum from the earlier discussion. Uh, the yeah, the, the one that he... Um, it was a quite brief discussion I, I believe it was kind of he was cut off mid-sentence by a dwarven negotiations yes uh a man yes the the uh political representative of the emperor as it were in this particular instance a man in his mid-30s um not of the soldiering type um sitting across from bell is a dark-haired woman in her what appears to be potentially late 30s early 40s um wearing a uh, shining silver breastplate with blue um a blue tabard underneath and a white wolf emba uh, emblazoned on the front of her um of her breastplate next to her sitting a man running into elder years gray beard long straw like gray white hair animal furs thrown around him a uh elk's head helm set aside to the side um and you be uh, as you sit down the general says these are the individuals i spoke of Lady Cressida, I introduce to you the survivors of the Vermilion Spears and of the Abbey. And you see the woman just kind of incline her head. And Vel turns to you and says, please, we all tell her what you told me a few days ago. Sure. First, let's do the same thing as last time. Put the head down. Oh, um, that's Nethra a, moves downwind of said yeah, I was gonna say, that's thing. about four days to ripen. Oh, it's ripe. Yeah, she. Ooh. Keeps a straight poker face for a few moments, but you can see the green at the edges as she <clears throat> what is that thing and what is that smell i take it your highness excellency something along those lines have not necessarily dealt with the undead or the followers of the grandfather I have dealt with the followers of the Plague Lord, thank you. Then this... you shouldn't be so green. <sighs> you look like one of my shits. Turns to look at the general and says, your troops discipline does you credit, general. And you can see General Vell like shoots you a very dirty look. If you please skip to the part where you explain what this is. Certainly. Number of now weeks ago, a lady impersonating a member of the clergy that had recently taken over at the Abbey was, in fact, some sort of necromancer. 
poisoning. A necromancer. Yes. Do you want me to tell you the story, or do you want to keep interject? I mean, you're telling a fine story as it were, as in necromancers have not been known for hundreds of years. Do you need me to put this in your lap? As you've said, I have seen the followers of the Plague Father. This could easily be one of his creations nope. or one of the Masters of Fate, perhaps. Nope. nope. Shot the necromantic bitch in the face. Shot the guy who worshipped the Plague Father in the face. Burned both of them. Can definitely say they were two different folks. Then turns to look at the uh, turns to look at General Vel. There you have it. She shot her. Problem yeah, solved. They Why also are we here? Because they also exploded, and then there was lots of burning, and then there was lots of undead following us so a field near the abbey where a conflict happened where both sides failed to police the dead as the woman was committing a necromantic ritual that killed most of the other spears that were under her tender mercies and they rose from the dead and walked and we fought them on top of a southern erstwhile ally coming to her aid as opposed to us and employing this thing which was tracking us for days and killed our captain in a single swipe roll me a um let's go with a fellowship plus 20 for your head on here to start off with does she believe you okay that makes it a let's say 58 under a 66 okay Turns to look at General Vell. Suppose I believe you have some sort of necromatic problem. Why, pray tell, is the weakness of my enemy a problem? Because that weakness will turn, turn to another enemy's prophet, one that does not care about worship, one that cares about dead in ascension. These are true believers. Tell me, this erstwhile ally you speak of, does he come from my people? Southern, the lady. Ah, yet again, this sounds like distinctly turns to General Vell, your problem. You're not listening. Gisela, I'm going to let you loose here in a second. I'm going to say one last piece. Please don't upset her more than you already have before I get a chance, but go for it. I don't handle humanity well. Short-lived. Short-sighted. I'll put it to you this way. They're real. We have trudged through forest. And it is through aid coming not just from Sigmar, but also from other members of the Pantheon that we made it here. And yeah. I don't think you want all of the things that have died in your forests, as this thing does. It is a rising tide, and it is coming for every single living thing. So if you mind putting your holy war away temporarily, so we can deal with an actual threat, then we can get back to paying mercenaries on either side to kill one another for your fancy hats. The old man sitting next to Lady Cressida leans in 
Um, and quietly, but loud enough that many of you can hear, says, We dealt with something very similar to this nigh on two decades ago. If you remember the troubles in the Damarung along the Twilight Road that I was involved in, we saw similar creatures. And she turns and goes, yes, Rothbard, but we dealt with it. Wait, um, you were there. Do you know a name? Mama Zara. Rothbard, the kind of sits up and looks at you and says, I am not familiar with this name. It's quoted by the Necromancer. We dealt with a specter. We dealt with undead. We dealt with dark fae. I do not remember a Necromancer amongst their number. Cressida sits and turns to the general and says, I... appreciate that you're asking us for help, though I don't see precisely how this is our problem. You have an internal issue. I don't see how this is any different than if the Grendel Horde that turned loose in the Southern Realms a nigh on seven years ago you did not ask for a truce then. You dealt with it. In fact, you didn't offer us any assistance when we faced an incursion of trolls from our mountains. Why should we offer you any help now? Why should we not watch you die and sweep down to claim what is ours? General, if I might. Vel turns and... The Lady Cressida is not incorrect that this currently appears to be a problem just for the Southern people. But I think someone with as much war experience as she has should realize that because something appears to be that way now doesn't factually make it so. Even if this is currently in the South and as your own counselor has indicated, that might not be entirely correct. Then a undead problem here would eventually become a problem for you as well. Only think of the thousands of soldiers killed here, who could then rise again and be sent towards your forces, not worried about food or shelter or rest. But more than this being bad for you, I think you're forgetting that you are not a separate entity. What is bad for us is also bad for you. In times of peace, we can afford to make war. For nearly two decades, our empire has been torn apart by the war and strife of this civil war. But now there's a real enemy standing here at our gates and we can no longer afford to cling to the squabbles that have divided us. For too long, We've been allowed to lie to ourselves that this conflict is for the honor and supremacy of our gods. Gisela is going to touch the amulet on her neck and gesture towards the white wolf on Lady Cressida's breastplate. It is not about the gods. As a man, Sigmar worshipped Ulrich 
and when he ascended to godhood, it was Ulrich himself who crowned him. They stand united together along with the greater pantheon and their concerns are far above the petty politics of mortals. This empire, our empire, was founded during a time of war. Sigmar brought the people together to stand united against the same evil. And together, they were victorious. Since then, we've seen ever more the things that make us different and divided. But we have let those who hunger for power point out and exploit those divisions. It's time for us to see past that, to see that there's always been more making us similar than different, that there's always been more that ties us together than drives us apart. And to remember that the strength of our people comes when we stand united. So when it's your turn to face this foe, do you want to face it by yourselves after our armies have already gone? Or do you want to face it standing together with us? Um, roll a hmm, charm. Plus 20. Roll a charm plus 20. Okay. Um, so I also have the new meeting of the minds talent, which gives me a plus 10 to attempting to bring compromise to two extreme positions. Do I get to add that? Or yeah, is that you do. In the 20? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Charm plus 30. Charm plus 30. Um, yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, where's charm at? Okay, fellowship. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a nine. <laughs> There's a... The Lady Cressida sits back. Rothbard goes to lean in to whisper into her ear and she just holds up her hand like in a stop. Looks right at Gisela. Looks back at Val. <clears throat> She's the first one I'm hearing that speaks sense. It has been a long time since we stood together against a threat like this. But that was the very essence of it. That is what Ulrich brought to this empire. It has been a long time since we have faced a threat like this to stand together against. General Vell, I will accept your truce, and I will work with you against this threat. Once it is dealt with, I will send messengers off to our Western army to halt the assault on Altdorf, and we may speak on what our next step will be. If it's not too much to ask, perhaps we send messengers to halt the assault on Altdorf before that. <laughs> Yes, maybe, perhaps. If we all die, perhaps perhaps the Emperor and my forces should know what is transpiring here. Perhaps it would be best if our corpses don't attack them in the midst of their own battle. <laughs> yes, perhaps. Well, turns to look at you all and says, Uh, I'm sorry, Vel turns to look at you and says, thank you. You are dismissed. 
we will please report back to the Vermilion Spears. There will be orders forthcoming in some time. And turns to look at like Gisela, but all of you, and just says, well done. Thank you, General. I have continued um, plans to make with the head of the Church of Tull here to make sure that we are prepared. And Gisela's going to get out and walk out. Uh, turns to look at right and says, I'll speak to the Vermilion Spears. If you're not double pay already, I'll see that you are. And if you are double pay, I'll get you a bonus. Now, get the fuck out of my tent. All right. You are standing outside the tent on this hill. Um, a few honor guards stand loosely close to you all. You can tell that one of them, the uh, there's an Orican like white wolf who is like draped in like regal armor with like a white wolf pelt over, who's standing right by the flap, who was like definitely leaning into eavesdrop when you all came out and then like stood up at attention when you <laughs> when you stepped out and is now looking resolutely forward and pointedly ignoring you all. Well said. Thanks, Ed. Not entirely sure where that came from, but I'm glad it was the right thing to say. Yeah. I feel like I've um, I feel like I've run a little bit. Um, I wasn't lying. I do have continued logistical plans to make. Um, how are the plans going with the rest of the spears? Well, I can tell gathering up every single pole arm between here and the rest of the empire, trying to hoard every last one of them and make sure they're properly distributed because best way to keep it so that our men aren't, you know, joining the ranks of undead is to keep them at least at the arm's length if not for We're relying on pole arms? Oh, uh, also Nethra has been making sure that all the powder heads are getting in line. So we'll have, we'll have pounders, but once the line's met and the line will be met, it's going to be need the uh, shield wall and pole arms, because it's going to be a bad time. Well, Sigmar, help us, because going against the undead with pole arms and shields does not sound like a winning strategy. You'd be surprised. You could do also, a lot. I I not pick... smart enough to be afraid of things, guys. Oh, it's not necessarily trying to scare the undead. I've also been paying attention to some of the things that you do. I think I've... Well, I'm not devout. Know enough of the hand gestures and rigmarole to make some of that bold. Excellent. That's very good first step. We can work on devotion later. Takes more than a couple of weeks. Mm. Eh. We like to cheat. Dwarven thing. Fire, <laughs> guns, all the things in the good way. I will be endlessly optimistic for you. I appreciate it. you all stand outside this tent a uh, familiar figure begins to walk up uh, the road as you see a woman in Vermilion Spears outfit but with a new breastplate adorning her you see uh, formerly Sergeant Major Helena, uh, Helena who you last saw leading the group away from the abbey 
As she Hello, approaches. Captain. Aldar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as she looks down at her new, like, yes, I, uh, I've been promoted. It um, happens. My I was loosely filled in on what all happened, but I'm damned glad to see you all alive. Sorry, our uncle will be here. Yeah. We're yeah, glad he was a good one. You were able to get here as well. We're were we able to draw them away from you? Yeah, we 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 got a little bit of trouble, but that village we got there and they were already digging trenches and fortifying up and were incredibly welcoming. Uh we were able to fight off a few waves of uh, just animated corpses from the abbey nuns and sick soldiers mostly and then we were mostly left alone so we just struck out on the road and we arrived the day after yesterday seems you all cleared the way oh fuck Aldar if we had waited we could have gotten here safely yesterday on the road fuck waiting <laughs> um we also, did... weren't you the one who kept saying we were going to be late? We were going to be late. But it's funnier if I blame it on Aldar now. So... Turns to look at Geese and it's just like, we uh came across the burned to fuck village. Was that uh, your handiwork? Should have also been salted. i pretty sure I wasn't the one who burned it. Nope, I did that. No, that tracks, Nethra. That absolutely <laughs> tracks. I did that. It deserved it. I'm sure it did. Just because Inquisitors give us all a bad uh, reputation for burning things. Well. uh, Now we come to the slightly awkward part. You all have been placed under my command again. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, we have to get ready to move out. I'm I hope conf- you have a lot of salt and water. I'm also very confused. Where are we moving out to? I thought the point was we were going to hold the walls so that we could shoot a bunch of stuff. I remember that conversation correctly, correct? I was there, I under- there was a general, you had a under- guy in the nods. Yes, but I have a feeling that between moving up here to have this lovely meeting and now the fancy hat wearing folk have different ideas about it. well i will I, I the gm will really quick interject you are not remembering that correctly you guys suggested staying inside the walls yeah but then yeah. i rolled to convince him to say that that we should defend the walls because we could he were going to flank us he said no okay he so said we, no because he said that that if you get getting into a siege with undead is a terrible idea okay because they don't need food or water and that they will just wait you out or they will like slowly grind you down that that was the 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 conclusion of that meeting was they were going to look okay. to engage and take the heart out of the army was was the conclusion he came to um additionally as the captain was about to inform you apparently we have some new friends in all this and uh as friendly as we all are and as happy we are to be reunited as a Grand Empire. We're not about to let them inside the goddamn walls of Talmaheim. So, we're going to find a different place to engage the enemy. I hope we have the high ground. Well, that's what we're going to start heading east to do. Captain. Find some high ground. Trust can only be received as far as it is given. Entirely fair. That being said, I believe there are a bunch of innocent people in Taldaheim that I probably don't want in the middle of an undead siege. So there's I'm also not... the outskirt towns that would we be sacrificing if we stayed inside the walls that could also be problematic. But yeah. All right. Well, again, I hope you have salt and water. We're going to need lots of it. 
and powder. <sighs> Lots of powder. We do have that. Yeah, and a bunch of shites to move my cannons. All right, I've got to go move my cannons. And she starts to walk away. Because now that we're back together, she's artillery now, and she doesn't have to... She has yep. to acknowledge the authority of the infantry, but not really. <laughs> so, we are going to begin moving towards the uh, the battle. Um, and actually, I know this... Uh, so we're going to, again take a slight time jump here unless there's something that you all really want to do um can i use my talent in siegecraft to find the appropriate places to put these cannons oh absolutely i was going to actually say that we were going to jump to like the site of the battle yeah um where the uh where the army finds to set up um because obviously there is the scouting phase and then obviously the um you know mm -hmm. The artillery train needs to actually move there and all of that that we can probably fast forward slightly through. Yeah. Um, just... As the one nice thing about hordes of the undead is that they are quite slow. They march all day and night. They just don't march fast. How oh, sweet. These aren't those super fast undead. No, we're not. We're not necessarily dealing with with uh, the day after tomorrow zombies. Um, we're, 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 not, we're, we're facing, you know, the, the skeletons and zombies, not the ghouls. Today. Today. Give them time. Um, so. Pretty sure they have horses. The General Vell and Lady Cressida um, come to a reasonable agreement as the, actually, uh, does anyone have a rumor? I believe so, yes. Yep. I have a thought roll, on that as well. Roll me a rumor test. I think. I think. Yeah, both of you could roll me a rumor test if you want. Um, or uh, I'll aid you, Kisa. Are you sure? Probably makes more sense for you to do it. Okay. Narratively, I would say Aldar makes a lot more sense. To be I was gonna say, yeah, military no, rumors. It makes a lot more sense for Aldar to get it. So. Thirty-two under fifty-six. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah. Also, mechanically, that was pretty good roll so all right eldar as the army begins to mobilize and move out the the scuttlebutt is that the um the two forces came to an amicable amicable agreement um the uh army the northern army is going to be moving down and uh linking up with you all on the road as you push east and look to find um, an appreciable piece of high ground to defend along the primary approach um, on the same road that you all were coming down. Um, scouts have found a region that they like and that there's the push forward. The um, army, uh, the Imperial Army is likely going to be providing a good chunk of the artillery, supporting fire and cavalry. For this while well, the army of the north is going to be providing a decent amount of the infantry um it appears as they're starting to deploy that their hope is to have there be a screening force of pike squares with supporting infantry uh high ground artillery and firing and then a quick strike force of um cavalry and other infantry to kind of dive into the heart of the enemy army and cut out the leadership of it as it is supposed that without the necromancer based on your reports without the necromancer or powerful creatures commanding them that the undead will become listless and less harmful we need every fucking pistol here they have mm-hmm As the army begins to take up these positions, um, Nethra, I'm mm -hmm. assuming you're going to want to be on the heights with the artillery and the gunners for the moment. Question. Yes. Are you going with the equipment that the military provides or are you bringing your tank? She's going to bring the tank and all of the other guns because she's like, well... 
this is a case in which all of the guns are appropriate because one of them is going to crack at some point. Mm -hmm. Just pure numbers, one is going to crack. If I have the tank, then I have an extra cannon. If I, even if I don't need to, and if I need to make, find somebody to drive it for me to make it mobile, then we have a mobile tank. But right now the tank is an extra cannon. Okay. So you're maneuvering the tank as an extra piece of artillery and you will be stationing yourself with your artillery. What role would you like to make to arrange the artillery? Um, so with my siege craft talent, when you attempt to determine appropriate distances for siege engines and to employ them to hit, you gain a plus 20 base chance to warfare tests. Okay. So I think that makes sense, right? It's warfare. So warfare, yeah. Yeah, roll me, roll me a warfare check to to arrange the artillery. Um, okay, so that's a plus. So I roll a 10 under an 82. Nethra, you understand a basic principle of the evolving nature of this kind of warfare. And it's science. It's a simple matter of intersecting angles of the different weapons to create kill zones. And you arrange the varying artillery, the multi-barreled cannon uh, that fires smaller caliber shot in large numbers. You arrange the larger cannon, the uh, mortars that fire on a nice arcing trajectory to create on uh, two soft hills overlooking the road, a devastatingly imposing position that you think are going to be able to cause a significant number of casualties as the enemy approaches. As Nethra is arranging cannon, between the artillery, the infantry, and the strike force, Eldar, where are you placing yourself as the army is getting ready for battle? Um, it's... I'm with the pikes. I'm, I'm going to be where the fighting is thickest because it takes a lot of time to kill me. Um, and a pike square only truly works if you have angry fuckers with shields in front of the or beside the pikemen. <laughs> the Vermilion Spears do have a square in there. They have a few, actually. They are positioned next to, they have interspersed a few um, of the uh, Imperial squares with um, with the uh, Ulrican squares. They haven't quite created two distinct lines um you have uh if you're standing on the flanks you are standing with on your left familiar allies on your right uh individuals in the blue and the blue and white of Middenheim, standing there looking at you somewhat suspiciously but also resolutely don't worry, you can ask me whether or not I killed your grandfather after this. Billy, where do we find Remzaw in all this? I feel like you don't, for as big as he is. Um, he uh, has never been one to go where it makes sense for him to go um and considering he you know he has uh a, a larger gun in one hand and a and a back to corbin in the other hand now um there's there's <sighs> perhaps uh there's there's space in 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 skirmishing i'm down for that we can we can put uh we can put a skirmish force out in front 
to make initial contact and then fall back. I I like the idea of a skirmishing ogre. <laughs> would 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 it be just the one? <laughs> the there's a bunch of like there's a bunch of like really like like leather and like outdoors me the like, humans with like bows and then there's just an ogre who's just like he's got a gun a big the corbin a little bit more probably shirtless i like it. okay that's but can you get down like just you're silhouetting yourself really hard right now but i look like tree i'm gonna just go slightly further away from you <laughs> Um, Isola, where do you place yourself? So, Gisela's actually being a little bit of the social butterfly. Um, she's stopping by where all of her friends are and making sure that their weapons are all anointed. She knows the priests of Tal are out here anointing weapons in general, but she's going to make sure that her people all have an anointed weapon. Um, she's going to tell Ramshaw that there aren't trees on this hill, so he probably should be a shrub. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, make sure that whoever they have out here to get the wounded off the battlefield or like she she is legit flitting from one place to the other as she you know is trying to micromanage as many aspects of this as she possibly can um and then when it looks like we're about to get into conflict she's gonna try to get someplace where as much of the army as possible can hear her um, because she has a prayer she would like to do, and then she's sort of gonna individual strike force because she was only ever really loosely under the command structure in the first place. As everyone begins to position themselves, and Gisela moves around, clapping individuals on the shoulder, checking weapons. Nethra, making sure that all of the cannons are properly anointed. Aldar, grumbling at individual soldiers about, yeah, like, I don't know, whatever the dwarves grumble about, which is everything. Um, and, uh-oh, looks like we're at, oh, there we go. Do we have Pope? I'm still here. I, I saw a big. I saw. I'm sorry. I saw a big uh, hiccup in your in your picture. Um, as as the as uh, Eldar grumbles about soldiers in his day at the Middenheim soldiers off to his right. Remshaw, you are out in front of the army. In the lowlands by the road. The sun is setting behind you. The sun starting to touch the hill that the army is on. The shadows before you are lengthening. And there, in the deepening shadows and the darkness that's beginning to fall, is the hint of movement. One more time, I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. Can you say that last little bit again? In the deepening shadows, further down the road, in the opposite direction of your army, there is the hint of movement. Uh, Nethra's gonna call out. Well, this is, this oh, I don't is see the it. skirmishing force well outside of the army. This oh, is then I don't see it. Then never making... mind. Have fun. Yeah, sorry. Um... Excellent. So we see. Can I? How close? Roll me a perception uh, check. Uh, no, uh, uh, roll me an awareness check. Sorry. Okay. Under perception. Okay. Uh, 
Oh my gosh. I rolled a one. <laughs> I mean, this is, and I have fucked up a lot of rolls this game, and I would not be lying. 75 I, yards off precisely. Slightly off the road, exiting a small uh, patch of trees, there is a fairly large group of shambling figures. He'll, uh, uh, cause I, I'm, I'm assuming I'm skirmishing with a group of people. Yeah. You've got like a bunch of humans with like bows and like, like kind of woodsman-y sort of, uh, attitudes around them. Um, he'll, uh, do a whistle and then, um, reference the moving struck the, 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 the large you see moving mass. All of them like acknowledge and start pulling arrows out of their quivers and start notching them and looking at you and being like, get ready to move. Um, I'm I'm going to load my the shotgun that I had mm -hmm. used with Nethra. And the one of them says, we'll lose first. We have a bit more reach than you. If they start running, you give them a blast while we fall back. You run back. We fire. We loose while you move. We go for anything getting close to you. We just step stare it back to the army. Ready? And you see them all pull their bows back. And there's a just whisper as they all release. The arrows fall. You see one or two of the creatures suddenly sprout shafts out their torso as they twitch and then part of their body like goes limp and they continue to move forward. And you just see the scout master go. Well, that fucking sucks. Let's Get moving, get moving, get moving, get moving. He goes, you keep that loaded. I'm going to want that in a second. Let's move a little bit more, move a little bit more. And they let another one, another volley go as they begin to move. Um, All of character weapons are blessed. Uh, that's what I, that's what I was checking. Yeah, I we did get a lot of the army blessed, although the arrows of the scouts not on the top of the list. No, no, I was, I, I figured that was what happened. I was checking for that. While this was happening, uh, we were getting yes. Really good stuff. Uh, Remshaw's cannon is definitely blessed. Um, as they begin to move, and a uh, you see a few of them fall on the second volley, though not as many as you'd like. And then suddenly, as they get a bit closer, there's a snarl from one of them. As, like, <laughs> as they just charge forward, a wall of them. Remshaw, as their scout master goes, all right, let him have it. I'm a, I'm a let him have it. Go ahead and roll. Uh, it'll be fifty-four under sixty-six. Roll damage. Uh. But this is oh let me let me bring up the weapon info sorry real quick yeah okay CB plus three it's D six mm-hmm we're going roll and if you roll a one or a six you get to roll again and add it. Roll a one. Nice. Four. One. Four. All right. So that's a total of ten. Ten. And then uh, CB plus three plus three, so thirteen. Thirteen. You let loose with a blast that takes at least two of the creatures off their feet and staggers several of the rest 
as the rest of you sitting either in the lines of infantry or Nethra up on the hill see the sudden flash of a gunshot and Rumshaw that blast creates just the momentary illumination of a wall of undead moving towards you and as first contacts made I think maybe we go to an early break to then move into our battle as initial contact has been made and Remshaw is going to have to scoot. Uh, I, I support... Muted perhaps. Yeah, I'm muted for... I was muted for you, but not for anybody else. So, uh, hey y'all, we're going to take a break. We'll stretch, we'll get some drinks, and then we'll be back because now we've got an ogre with a cannon firing one-handed, Nethra with a shit ton of cannons, Aldar with a bunch of pikemen and sh shields, and Gisela being all holy and shit. It's great. We are totally going to beat this army of the undead 60-40. Those are the odds. I'll see you in a bit, everybody. <laughs>
everyone, welcome back. We hope you were refreshed, you stretched, you did all of the good stuff, and are ready to help, uh, um, you know, not die in this onslaught of undead horde. Hi, uh, uh, turning it back over to our GM and our wonderful ogre so that they can survive. Remshaw, mm -hmm. you unleashed your your uh, small cannons worth of fire into this. You felled several of the creatures as they came forward. The other scouts are fleeing. They're turning and running, preparing to pivot back as they're all running. They're pulling more arrows. You see a wall of undead as they begin to surge forward. What do you do? Are there any trees? <laughs> there are a few, like, what do you want to do with the tree being an oak? You know what I want to do with the tree. If you want to climb um, a tree that, that no, there are not. It involves reverse climbing. It involves oh. bringing the tree to the ground. Oh, there are some trees. There, there are some smaller trees you could knock down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. I want, I'm here for this. Make me an athletics check. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll the roll, and I'm gonna check my score. Uh, yeah, that is a uh, sixty-three under sixty-eight. Sixty-three under sixty-eight. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> you successfully. Uh, tell me, you tell me, how do you take this tree down? Um, uh, as he's falling back, as they're notching, there, but he's just trying to buy them a little bit of time. Um, so he finds, uh, like, this tree has character. It's probably been there for a while. There's probably been some some uh, young poety type in the area made that made a watercolor painting with Games Workshop paints. Um, oh, sorry, am I not allowed to? I'm really more of a pro girl guy, but that's fine. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, it's it's already kind of leaning, and he'll jump up and grab a sturdy branch and like reverse heave ho and try to rip the roots that are already kind of out of the ground a little bit, even more out of the ground, and uh, lay the tree in front. So you'd it, you would have to take a second to jump over the tree to buy them some time uh, and then fall back to them. Billy, I'm heartbroken as I had a whole backstory for that tree that we're never going to get into now. As you see two initials carved in the tree, whose initials? You'll never know. As you tear <laughs> down the tree, you actually smash one of the one of the zombies as it was drawing closer to you as you pull this down and several of them like stumble over it and as the ones coming up behind go to climb over them you create a little bit of a like a, a log jam as it were um about 500 ish yards off from the army and uh with that i'm gonna jump over to our the rest of our party um, as I'm going to ask for just a quick, just generally speaking, I want an initiative roll to see what we're all doing. Okay. So everyone roll me initiative <laughs> so we can get an order. Throw it in chat, please. So I can, there we go. Aldar, 13, Gisela, 11. The one time rolling low is not good. The one Nethra, time you rolled terrible, didn't I you? I want to roll high. I rolled a nine. I did roll yeah. a nine. Okay. Well, I mean, it could have it literally could have been better. Um all right. Nethra, since I don't think uh anyone's gonna beat you. Um you have dark vision. Roll me this is not a uh this is not your turn. Roll me a quick awareness test to see how well you can perceive everything that's happening, and you don't take any penalties for the impending darkness. Mm -hmm. Do you have an item that lets you see over distances? Do you have a? I have a scope, like a... and I have a scope and a um, 
Yeah, but it's a scope, telescope, and spyglass. Oh, well, in that case, take a plus 20 to this. Okay. So that's an... I... Excuse me. I would have failed it without that plus 20. I want people to know that I could have failed this. Uh, but that is a... Um, a 69 under a 70. Nice. Um... Otherwise, I would have failed that test. You squint to see the movement and then snap up your spyglass and look. You see Ramshaw tear down that tree and move. And you see the, uh, a, there are more than just the ones around this tree. There is a large group, though the Vanguard is the one that's stumbling over this tree at the moment. What do you do? She... You don't whistle with artillery because that'll just get distraction with all of the cannonballs and they won't hear you. So instead, she takes um, she takes one of the shovels that you keep around to reset mm -hmm. everything and knocks the tattoo on the barrel of the cannon that resonates mm -hmm. to give the angle and trajectory and incoming uh, combatants. So the range on this is on the further end of even artillery, but since you're elevated, I'm giving it to you. So I want you to roll a Warfare minus 20 on this because of the extreme range to see if you can place a shot right into that. Okay, big... so does my, does my Siege Craft... Yes. Offset that minus 20 then? What, uh, give me, the siege craft is what again? When you attempt to determine appropriate distances for siege engines and employ them to hit, you gain a plus 20 base chance to your warfare. Yes, tests. that would offset it. So you're, you're to a flat roll. Rolling flat, okay. Yep, you're good enough that this long range shot is, is, mon it is, is a normal performance. Yeah, and I get to flip to succeed on warfare tests. Oh, nice. Um, so that is warfare. Hold on. Uh, Okay, so that's a 58, and because it succeeds, it counts as a critical success. All right, um, so... And I can, um, make sh I can spend a fortune point to make sure it doesn't hit any of the allies. Do I need to do that to avoid hitting? You don't need to do that for right now. They are not, they are not close enough, as Remtra did that and then ran. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I'm going to... Since we're dealing with a mass of zombies, I'm not going to make you roll specific damage for this. We're just going to go with the fact that you succeeded the heck out of this. And I have now have gruesome shots, so I do more damage in general. But yeah. I figure that counts as, like, she had rifles up to this point, and now she has her cannons, and she's just like, I do mm -hmm. more damage with cannons anyways. So, the first volley from the cannons, and only the long-range cannons fire on this point the the multi-barreled ones are holding their fire um but the mortars and the uh more traditional solid shot cannons all bark at one moment over the top of the army as there's a flash and remshaw as you are running and you turn back suddenly the ground behind you seems to lift as pieces of zombie and uh earth are intermixed as a cacophony of impacts happens behind you and the entire vanguard of this force is well the initial force of zombies is wiped out and the scouts and remshaw you have no problem with drawing back to the main force now now up next i believe was uh well Remshaw. Remshaw, where do you deploy now? Are you moving all the way back up to the artillery or are you staying on the front lines? Uh, it, it definitely make more sense to do front lines because uh, I don't have the range to be effective at artillery. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, uh, let's head, let's head to the front. All right. Uh, and then I will say, if you would like, you can reload your weapon with your remaining, like, turn, basically. Yep. Okay, and, uh, I'll do that. 
narratively will have you find the vermilion spears find aldar and just like pivot behind then begin loading your weapon as aldar um you can see approaching even like the initial way the initial like forward like uh group of zombies that charged after uh remshaw have been destroyed the further tide of undead are still approaching. What would you like to do in this moment of preparation? All right, lads. This is going to be unlike anything you see. See if you can carry it to And starts going into um what a hell of a way to die as we're marching forward yep gisela yeah as the pike squares prepare uh-huh and a hell of a way to die begins to echo out from the vermilion spears and spread amongst a few imperial forces and uh then a slightly bawdier tune amongst the Middenheim troops begins to try to rival a hell of a way to die. And a small singing contest emerges between the two forces that have intermixed. What would you like to do? Well, first she's going to go, damn it, Aldor, now I'm going to have to yell over this. Um, I'm gonna cat or I'm going to pray for chaos overturned first, because that'll give me the sec the extra AP I need for my second prayer. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get chaos. Go ahead overturned. and roll for chaos overturned. Okay. Um this is still normal, right? Because I'm not in combat. Yes. Well, that was real close. That was an 80 under an 85. Oh wow. So, All right. That was real close. But is this now one I, of your auto crit prayers? It is not, but way to spoil that. Thanks. That was coming Sorry. up next. I, look, I needed to know. <laughs> it was, this is not one of my auto crit prayers. Um, so right. it's just the extra AP. It goes off. What are you praying for next? Next, I am praying for Lionheart, which is, if it's a success, it's an auto crit. Um, so she is going to raise her hammer up as high as it goes. And like this whole time, there's been like this little torch head on top of the hammer that sort of sputtered occasionally. Um, and hopefully I'm going to get this roll and it's going to go off real big. Um, and she's going to yell, um, Sigmar is with us. There is nothing to fear. All right. And that is a 70 under 85. But because of my new level up, Anytime I successfully make this this prayer, it is a crit. So me and six allies. So we're going to say my three friends here. And then because Gisela knows how armies work, we're going to pick the two generals of both the armies. So later. May I yes. also add someone in? Yes. As another individual steps up beside you. Uh-huh clad in furs with the elk helm placed upon his head the aging wizard Rothbard stands next to you sweet we will go with the aging wizard Rothbard then um so him my three friends and then we're gonna get General Val and Lady Cressida knowing that if we keep the heads of the army from being afraid they can sometimes help that go through so me and the six of them are now immune to intimidate skills and cannot be subject to stress fear or terror for the next 16 minutes for a larger battle context i'm also going to throw on this that you have a uh very gandalf like in the books uh bubble of calm about you wherever you go the soldiers seem to take heart and to have whatever despair they have quelled from them at least for the time that you're generally near 
Also, it doesn't technically make light, but I was kind of hoping maybe a little bit of flavor light from the torch, but. The torch flares, light <laughs> in the growing darkness goes out from you Sweet. as the line of zombies and other mostly rotted undead surge forward. And as they begin to close that final gap, Nethra, you see this huge group closing in and we are now going to enter into a phase of the battle as we're going to take a slightly more, for this initial phase, a slightly more cinematic view of things as initial contact. Uh, we've already done initial contact, but like the first phase of the battle begins and the enemy's tide of zombies strikes the front line and the front line needs to hold. So this is about successes and how well you can succeed uh mitigate any further bad things happening later on so nethra describe to me what you want to do from your position and then let's make a roll for it um nethra pulls the flat the she's got the cannons running on because now she knows the exact distance of where the engagement the the hold line will be so the mm -hmm. distant cannons will be there and, you know, a few will get through, but that's where the initial point is. And she's going to take the spyglass and take a moment to scan to see if she can see yet the commander of that horde. Not you looking to shoot him, but test. looking to roll, looking to find him. Roll me an awareness test. Cool. So that's a 34 under a 60. No figure stands out in this horde. They are all shambling horrors that seem to be acting under one will, but mm -hmm. the source of that will is not visible even to you. And then she's gonna take a quick, she's gonna scan the sky quickly and turn to one of the uh, crew on the gun and be like, your job is officially Watch up. Yes, ma'am. Also, somebody get me some more water. That gun's too hot. Someone throws a bucket of water on him. There's just a big shh as like steam runs up. Ready to fire. Don't fire the one you just threw water on, you dumbass. That's how it explodes. As, it, as just <laughs> sputters and just says, yes, ma'am. You don't do that! <laughs> so. So you were looking for, what would you, uh, do you want to do anything on top, on that information, or are you? Um, she's, uh, she's gonna keep an eye out. She's, she's running the guns and firing the guns at, in a rhythm to make sure that they stay on rhythm and that they, that point that we hit stays the gives all of the army like the most buffer that they can and does the most damage from that point out Holy um, a warfare check yes indeedy no modifiers from my end so you get your plus, plus 20, 20 for your siege craft and you flip to succeed yep so that is a 12 under uh 62 or no 82 um rippling fire from the crests as long guns fire the rotating barrels of the multi-barrel things where there are decks of three barrels that fire one two three flip up another three one two three flip up one two three and then the loading begins as this unrelenting rhythmic barrage begins and as the front line watches the zombies approach there is just intermittent and constant large shot, small shot, large shot, small shot, large shot, small shot, thinning their ranks as they come towards you. But come towards you, they do, as they come in to crash towards you. Remshaw, what are you doing in this initial clash between forces? Uh, gun. 
gun. You are firing your you are firing your large weapon into it. Mm-hmm. We will go with several unloadings of this weapon, as again, uh, we are going slightly more cinematic in this version. So roll me, uh, go ahead and roll me uh, your weapon skill. Um, martial melee, uh, martial ranged, I believe, but you get a bonus for using this in, in melee, correct? Uh, and I don't get a penalty. You don't get a penalty. So go ahead and roll me your martial melee. Uh, it is a, oh, a martial range still? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Marshall uh, range, my bad. Uh, 16 under 66. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's resolve the melee crew and then we'll, 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 uh, describe as we go forward. Uh, Eldar, mm-hmm. what are you doing as the two lines come together? Um, he's not stopping singing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like to use that as a leadership test. Please do. That is a 33 under a 66. I'm assuming that's inspiring words. Yeah. All right. As we're, we're, we're going to hold. Uh, Everyone here may, every, the entire party may take the plus one to your damage and peril thresholds. Um, as Aldar succeeds well, again we'll describe in a second i want to see what Giesel is doing and then we will uh go through and and let you all describe how you do this okay well Gisela has one more prayer she wants to pray before she really determines what she's doing go ahead and roll me that prayer okay I'm going to pray for unassailable bulwark, which is another auto crit prayer if I get it off. I do with a nine under an 85. So I am now grievous and serious injuries are treated as modern. And I'm also immune to all damage from all melee weapons for the next 13 minutes. Gisela gives zero fucks confirmed. Um, yeah. And since you have your spell up that lets you do two things in a regular combat, I'll let you do, or multiple things in a regular combat, I'll let you do two things cinematically. So please yeah. do another thing. Okay. So I wanted to make sure I had my uh, can't touch this prayer up before I did the next thing. Um, trying to stay within the bubble of calm that she seems to have and keeping as many of the frontline soldiers in that as possible. She is going to push through the shield wall and wade into the middle of this army of undead. All of whom are not touching her with melee uh, attacks. What? Oh no, we're like, I'm good with this. Let's begin the description here and then okay. we'll go to Aldar and then Remshaw and then one other thing and then we'll move to the next phase of the battle. Because that was going to be her next attack or her second thing is she wants to be in the midst of all of these undead to do. I have a brand new prayer I can pray. And I want to be as deep into the undead as I possibly can while still getting the front line into my bubble. So however deep that is, that you tell me. And I'm going to pray for Flames of Order. All right. Which goes off with a 35 under a 85. And this is my greater auto crit. What does it do? So, for a second, it looks like Gisela gets swarmed by the number of zombies on top of her. Or Mm -hmm. skeletons, I don't... Undead on top of her. It's zombies. It is zombies and rotting corpses. And then there's, like, this bright white light under all of them. And she stands up. And she is entirely encased in bright white flames Mm -hmm. 
that shoot out from her in an explosion pattern and only hurt unholy creatures, making them take 2d10 plus 10 damage and if that ignores their armor and if they're still alive after that they're set on fire you carve a hole in the center of this charge yeah. um as there is this just like explosion as you see gisela in the middle of all of this and a like pyre of fire rising out of her aldar mm -hmm. you're singing you begin to sing the troops around you forming their formations, standing firm, using their pole arms to keep the zombies at bay as they catch them on the very ends of their halberds, guiding them into other ones. The Vermilion Spears and the two uh, Ulrican uh, pike squares near you um, maintain their position quite easily. And between the artillery barrage and Gisela's uh, explosion, the other ones are not heavily pressed. And the ones that do get through, the ones that do get close in your area, they have to deal with Remshaw, who is a terror in this moment, as the niceties of diplomacy and all of that are done with. And Remshaw is simply slamming the barrel of his weapon against creatures and pulling the trigger, pressing it to chests and heads and just blasting them as it comes free, sweeping the barrel to clear the rest as he rotates it to the next one and then shoves it into another one, pulling the trigger. Um, the entire time this is happening, you see Rothbard standing behind chanting holding his hands up pulling them in as you see a swirl of amber energy around him and he releases it and you see hundreds of black crows emerge from him and descend down onto the undead pecking and biting beginning to eat away at them as this initial wave of the enemy is dispersed no pike squares are broken. No pike squares are under stress. Well done. As a small calm falls over the battle. Gisela, you are overextended as you hear Captain Helena say, Gisela, that was real, real impressive. Please get the fuck back here now. I take your orders as a suggestion and not an order. But it's a good fucking suggestion. <laughs> I walk slowly. I'm like, I did really good out there. As okay, you walk and I back, walk back to the front line. <laughs> and the artillery fire ceases for a moment as the barrels are left to cool. And there are no more zombies left on the field, aside from a few still dragging themselves in pieces towards the line and you see individual like halberman just coming out and just like Shoop! like to finish them off you hear the thump 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 of thousands of feet stepping in unison as yes uh a new wave approaches Aldar, uh, you are the, uh, Nethra, your warfare is largely geared towards firing weapons, correct? I, I mean, she has, I have, I have two dots in warfare in general. You She's, have two, two she, dots, yeah. And Nethra's an, a very intelligent person, and mm -hmm. Aldar also. You may either, you two are in separate places, so you can both roll me warfare checks separately. If anyone else has a dot in warfare, you may roll me a warfare check. I do have a dot in warfare, but since I was called back to stand next to Aldar, I'm going to give Aldar uh, aid Oh, you can, yeah, it. you could give Aldar uh, assistance. Is that an 11? All right. So you can replace your number with three. Oh. 
Okay, I will take the 39 then. All number right. 69. So, Aldar, you... And we'll get to Nethra in a second, because you're going to get additional. First of all, that was obviously a... Um, if that wave had broken you, wonderful. But that was a testing wave. That was the most expendable of the undead that were thrown against you. You weathered it well. Now comes a more serious assault, a more damaging test. Nethra, you have the advantage of... Um, and Eldar, you, you're drawing this through general battle sense. Like, there is a pause. There is another wave coming. You can almost sense it, that there will be an enemy attack and that there will be something else. You don't know what, but you know that the next wave, the next attack will be more sophisticated than a simple charge into your lines. Nethra, you have the advantage of perspective as you are on high ground. You can begin to see the block formations of marching undead the more martial amongst them, the skeletons, the fallen soldiers from the battlefield, those that in life carried some sort of martial discipline with them, carrying it over into undeath, as long as well as weapons and armor moving forward. You also sense that this would be the time that more substantial forces require more substantial control. The leadership is likely arriving, as well as flickers of movement on the flanks. She um, pull. She shouts to the cannons, All right, you saw that bright, shiny light? That's going to be your target from now on. Hit where that bright shiny light was. Also, pull out the time for the fire. All of them. Um, because we have incendiary shot. And Ooh. that's gonna oh. be more fun. Um, and but she also is load at the same at the same time she's shouting these orders, she's loading the repeating rifle because the minute she sees anyone that looks like a commander on this field, because she had Gisela bless this, uh, she's gonna shoot them in the face. Okay. She said she was going to um, shoot them in the face. Wait, to be clear, was the bright flash of light me? Or are they targeting me? No, they targeted where, where you, you were. were. Oh, okay. Because that, right. that was the ideal point now. Got it. No, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure. No, but it do see, it doesn't matter. I have a, my, one of my traits means that I don't hit you if I don't want to. Yeah, I'd rather not, us not use fortune points on that. I think we're going to need them for other things. Yeah, it's okay. And she's like, Next and she wave. points to the guy she point she gave directions to look up is like, and now you're going to be ice peeled. The ground, those on the front line can now see a perfect line of corpses stepping left, right, left, right. Weapons held in hands, armor loosely hanging on skeletal or dilapidated figures. Some of them skeletons, some of them the slightly juicier corpses of those that fell at Stalbrook, carrying the weapons that they had there as they move forward in lockstep towards you. There is the glow of purplish light emanating from the back of the ranks as we are going to enter back into initiative as another wave is coming we are going to stay slightly cinematic for one more round and then we are going to get into slightly more complicated things nethra what is the artillery heights doing uh she gave them the orders hit the hit break their call break the columns break the squares Hit officers if roll you can. Me a, roll me a warfare test. So that's a 21 under a 62 for a crit success. Oh, 
Whenever I exceed, succeed on a warfare toss, it counts as a crit. Yep. The artillery... These sorts of formations are exactly what these artillery are made for as they rip into these forces. Eldar. Or I'm sorry. Um, uh, Remshaw. As these creatures draw near and they begin to close in, what are you doing? You are muted. Loading if I haven't done so already. You, you could have loaded in the interim. There was a pause. Um, then I'm going to hold uh, until I see the whites of their eyes. Ooh. I like that. Aldar. Uh, is pretty much just a yelling out across the lines, hold, because <laughs> I know where the artillery is dropping. Yep. Uh, let let them come to us. <laughs> as well as a general order, heads and legs, lads, heads and legs. Gisela, as the line begins to brace for the impact of this next charge, the artillery rending into them horribly. What are you doing? So, Gisela's gonna... There's nobody in range, and we don't see a leader yet, correct? Correct. Okay. Gisela's gonna do one more prayer that she's never done before, and she's Look, I have very few things you're, that you're I can gonna, do, and do this the is prayer. one of do them. The I was like, don't give me that look. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do one more prayer. She's never done it before. She doesn't know how to do it. So we're going back to our, how do I do this without training rules? It's a flat roll. You have all the You have all the blessings of Sigmar at this point. Yeah, but we haven't had to do that since the beginning. So it's just good to remind everybody. All right. So I am going to pray for Imperial Might. Ooh. Uh, that is a success with a 54 under. Technically, it's 85, but it's petty. So it's 95. It, or, yeah. So, um, mostly all this does is her hammer the the flames that have been kind of still sparking up and down Gisela's arms since she was engulfed in fire now reach out past her arms down onto the hammer and I now get to use my willpower and casting scores in place of my combat scores nice yeah as Gisela summons fire. Nethra, in the rippling fire of the artillery, it's hard to hear. A hand begins smacking you on the side, and you see the individual you told to watch the sky saying, Eyes up! Eyes up! As figures begin to descend out of the clouds I, towards the artillery. I had wanted to do one other thing. I'm sorry, after having get, gotten called back, I still have a couple AP I wanted to use that to move so that when we get charged, I don't have to go through the shield wall to get back out around them. Okay. Um, all right, that's good. Um, Nethra, figures are descending out of the clouds. What would you like to do? Snipers on the air! She's pulling her gun and firing up. She's, she kept the rifle on purpose and she had a, a couple other she's given to the crews because all of the infantry is down there. She doesn't have any protection for the guns, so she would have kept a bunch of gun, a bunch of the crews for their own protection. And since she had her spotter, she's going to shoot one of these, trying to shoot one of these things out of the sky. All right. Uh, roll me a, uh, roll me an attack with your martial range. Yeah. She wants to use, she wants to use snipers to shoot them and keep the, the actual cannons firing at the horde, if that makes right. sense. Um, rain, martial ranged. So that is a 
55 under a 65, 61. Um, do you want damage on that? Um, yes, please. You have a specific creature that is swooping down towards you at oh. this point. Okay, as, good. At so the I... top of this round, we are moving into regular AP combat against creatures. Okay, so six, six, one, six, three, four, ten, twenty-two, plus five is twenty-seven, plus three is thirty. Thirty. You let loose a shot as one of those bat-like creatures that harried you on the road swoops down at you. You fire and the shot impacts its chest and there is a large plume out its back as it slumps and careens down towards you. I'd like to roll a quick coordination test to make sure its corpse doesn't hit you. Coordination? As it was dive bombing sure. you. It, sure, that's an agility, I do that. Yeah. Um, so that's a four under a 63. <laughs> you dive and roll out of the way as this thing plows into the ground next to you. Can I a just- A few others land amongst the artillery and the artillery firing is briefly halted as the gunners amongst the artillery begin to fire and fight these creatures. Um, I'm gonna take one of the um, ignition torches mm -hmm. and as she kind of does this dive roll, out of the way, grab the ignition torch, and then shove it at the corpse. Just to burn it? Just to burn it. Yep. yep I mean, yep. her weapon is blessed, but not all of the... The cannons are blessed, but not all of the guns were blessed. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, burn them when they let you kill them! <laughs> On the front lines. Between Gisela igniting every single prayer known to Sigmar and Rothbard summoning the Amber Winds to him, the central Vermilion Spears Pike Square is quite the tempting target as there is a swoop in the air and something much, much larger than a bat lands scattering vermilion spears out as you see a skeletal visage of a massive head tattered wings swoop out draconic in its appearance though pale dead skin falls off it an individual on red armor carrying a lance sits atop it as it lands amongst you Remshaw a huge creature, undead, has landed very near you, and it appears to be turning amongst the spearmen and the like, the Vermilion spears, scattering individual soldiers as it turns to face Gisela and Rothbard. Um, what do you do in this moment? Uh, the so it landed how far away from me currently it's if you wanted to move it would be one ap to move into melee with this thing it just crushed slash scattered a whole bunch of the people you were fighting alongside um yeah let's uh let's get into it all right what would um, you like to do so i'm assuming if if it's like a like the dragon is completely skeletal, like no flesh. Oh, it has, it has some flesh. It has it has flesh. It has innards inside it, contained within the skeletal outsides. It is, uh, it, it is not a skeletal dragon. It would be a zombie dragon, as it were. Okay. All right. Um. Uh. I'd like to try to spot a hole and uh, fill it with some holy buckshot. That would be, uh, are you two looking to aim or are you looking to call your shot yeah. to a vulnerable point? Uh, which one is one AP? One AP to do, one AP to do either. Uh, aim increases your chances of hitting. Called shot reduces your chances of hitting, but increases your chance of damage. 
Uh, I'm gonna let's go call shot. All right. Um, so take a minus ten to hit. That's one AP. You have two AP left. You could aim to offset that, and then one AP to fire. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. I don't need to defend myself. All right. Uh, that looks good. <coughs> um. So, By the way, I would make you all roll a fear roll here. I, actually, a terror roll here, but Gisela. So we are, I just wanted to mention that we are bypassing a roll here since Gisela. Um, uh, I appreciate that. That makes it feel like the prayer actually does something. Because this so. thing was a terror thing. This is a terror thing that you don't have to deal with. So I feel like if Remsaw right, gets out of this, Remsaw gets out of this one, yep. uh, he's going to get dot 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 but gisela tattooed on his shoulder yep um i would like to point out that i am proving my age with my next statement but um so there's this the only time i think about this about how much we say sigmar loves gisela is i keep thinking about the uh movie the three ninjas and um the line Rocky loves Emily repeated and now I just hear Sigmar loves Gisela it almost works just on the same rhythm repeatedly now I need a character that just controls people through a Game Boy thanks Prax <laughs> um 2656 all right uh so actually this this creature per, per the rules does have a vulnerable spot that if you call your shot you get an extra d6 damage so you get to roll 2d6 on this thing. Uh, hopefully more. Where'd my dice thing go? Gosh darn it. Okay. And ones and sixes explode. And y'all have fortune points if you want to use them. Got a five. Got a six. Got a Ooh. two. All right. So five, six, two plus your uh, combat bonus. Uh, combat bonus is five. So that's a total of what? 18. 18. 18. And I think the gun the gun itself does an extra three. Oh, so okay. it's CB plus three. Yeah. All right. You so 21. Blackjack. Blow a sizable chunk out of the center of this thing. Keep hitting right where one of the wings connects to the body as it like ripples away, but then lets out a horrifying scream that you see some of the soldiers react to and then kind of like steady themselves and they all like kind of form up and holding their spears. I'm not saying because it's Gisela's Calm Bubble, but it's because of Gisela's Calm Bubble. Um, yeah, Eldar. All right, lads, I'll be right back. <laughs> um, Here's what I would like to do. I want to, in using Rimsaw's palpable hit on this thing, uh, in the moment where it's it's roaring, it probably lets a wing down. I want to use its wing as a launching pad to get up to its rider, and I'm going to try and knock his block off. All right, uh, roll me an athletics text, uh, test to see if you can get to him. All right. 44 under 74. 44 is a crit success. You definitely get there as you launch up dramatically. Um, go ahead and roll me an attack. And the pride dice are on fire tonight. That is somehow an 11. Ooh, an uh, 11. Under 71. 11 is a crit success, so I cannot parry. So go ahead and roll damage. Okie dokie. Six. All right. Three. Three. Um, all right. And so that would be nine. So uh, 22. 22? Yes, with a Morgenstern, he needs to make a toughness test. Otherwise, he moves out of melee range because I hit him so hard. Toughness? Also, 
Yeah. He crit succeeds. Okay, so he's able to hold his 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 ground. Um, if that managed to do a critical of some sort, please roll me three dice. Three? Yeah, because vicious and one of my talents. Oh, okay. <laughs> there uh, will be blood. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, he cannot bleed or suffer injuries. All right. Well, as you leap off this, you strike the face of this individual riding the uh, the um, dragon. He is wearing an ornate red metal helm with like dragon wings flowing off of it. His armor is uh, um, uh, segmented and like moves about him very fluidly all of it with a very dragon like theme all of the metal worked very finely with a red t tint to it your strike removes the helmet from him as the uh, all like the attachments snap his head snaps in a way that should have ended a normal foe as his head just kind of comes back around you see utterly pale white skin milk white eyes and a noble bearing about him as he smiles at you two long fangs coming out of his face going ah food presents itself oh so vampire and with that <laughs> Gisela it is your turn. Yeah. So I'm assuming I'm also one AP away from this thing. Uh, e yes. This the, the the dragon was bearing down on you. If you wanted to be in uh, you are in melee range with this thing. This thing was looking at you and Rothbard like you were meals. Well, I did want to sort of try to do a prayer on the writer, but I also then wanted to end in melee range with the dragon. So if I'm already within melee range with the dragon, I'll do the thing to the writer and then hit the dragon with my hammer. All right, I go for it. Both. What are you doing? Um. So once more into the breach, we are going to do a prayer that is new. Um, we're going to do celestial or celestial judgment. So I'm casting a prayer. Okay. You are in combat, so you're taking uh, a slight penalty. So it's a flat roll. Okay. Well, it was a 47 under an 85. So okay. Fine. Yes, you got that. So. Uh, Gisela is going to reach over to where her hammer is and from she's going to wave her hand through the flame at the top of it and be holding in her hand a mini twin tail comet, which she's going to throw at the rider. And he is going to take 3d10 plus my willpower bonus in damage and be knocked prone for three rounds. Please roll me the damage. Yeah. And then we will go into this. So that's 11 plus my willpower bonus is another 10. So that's 21 damage. 21 damage. Not bad. And he is knocked prone for three rounds, which I'm hoping is prone off of the dragon. So, Gisela. Yay. As you grab the emblem of the Twin Tail Comet of Sigmar and you pull it back, you all have seen the clouds part before for Gisela. The dawn is falling. The clouds part. A bolt of lightning strikes down. There is a blinding flash. There is not just a glow coming from Gisela's armor. She is radiant. 
and Gisela, from your person, unbeknownst to you, a voice emanates through your mouth as something takes hold of you. As you leap forward to hurl, as it expands out to bolts of lightning flying from you, a voice echoing calls out, Out Drazen Valskin, I judge you an old wiggle of quality. For crimes are against life itself, you will be punished from this world. As he is blown off of the dragon, landing writhing on the ground, alive, drawing to his feet, but clearly hampered, lightning dancing across his armor as he is uh, grievously wounded now. Well, awesome. I have one AP, so if he's in range, I'll hit him, and if not, I'll hit the dragon. You would need to move by the dragon to get at him at the moment. If you would like to <clears throat> take an opportunity attack from the dragon, I am more than here for that. I don't have the AP to both move past the dragon and hit him, so I will just hit the dragon then. Yeah, you blew him off the back of the dragon, so like, you know. No, I. But it was super cool and cinematic. Like, you can't not blow him off the back of the dragon. And he's on his ass for three rounds, so plenty of time. Oh. Um, all right, hitting the dragon with my hammer. Uh, that's a success with a 26 under an 85 because I get to use my willpower for that now. And it is... It did not explode that dice, but it is five plus my willpower bonus plus three, right? That's how yep. that works? Yep. Okay, so five plus 13 is 18 damage to the dragon, not enough. That is not enough. Can I explode that with the- You may uh, explode that with a fortune point. Okay, I will explode that with a fortune point. Fuck, that was a five. Like, I'm not gonna be able to hit this thing normal. Okay. I think I found the thing y'all can't kill in one round. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Spells will hurt it now. Yeah. <laughs> Laura's like, it has my full attention now. It has my full attention. All right, so that's six plus I rolled a four, so it's 10 plus 13 is 23, get it. That gets its a threshold. It officially moves to moderately wounded. All right, well, now I know what gets spells thrown at it. All right, it I is mean, now the prayers. dragon's turn. Prayers. Yeah. <laughs> the dragon is going to lash out with its claws and teeth at Gisela. I'm on top of this thing. Yeah, you don't worry. It, <laughs> it, it, it is aware of that. Um, Gisela, that is a 13 to hit you. I I know, by the way, I it is attacking you though. Um, 13 would not hit even if, oh, well, no, because we're not, this is not D&D. &D. Damn it, I keep forgetting. Okay, you're fine, keep going. Yeah, it rolled a 13 under 80 to hit you. Okay, so that would totally hit. Totally hit. And I rolled horrifically for damage. It is only going to do 18 damage to you. Well, that should be enough to go through my first threshold. And yet, Sigmar loves Gisela an awful lot. You are immune to melee and damage. And I am yep. immune to melee damage. Yep, as it slashes towards you, there is a flash as it... Its hand, its claws, like wince away from you. And I sort of want the nails on the chalkboard sound, like. <laughs> um. <laughs> and then it's going to buck wildly as I require Eldar to make a coordination test to stay on top of this thing and not be thrown. More than fast. Okay, so that is an eight under a 74. Eldar, you rodeo ride this thing. Death I, I, I see Gisela. 
I know it's not a river, but we'll do a story. Oh, wait, hold on. It has one more AP. Might as well use it. Rem shot, it's coming your way. Uh, it's going to use its lashing tail towards you. It succeeds, but it is not a crit success. Do you have an AP remaining that you would like to par parry or dodge with? Um, I used four. One, I, I used four, and that was what I had. All right. Um, what's your damage threshold? Uh, I think it was 802. Oh, well, <laughs> in that case, you only take one level. Um, uh, which which one are you looking for? Uh, the the what's your first damage threshold? 11. 11? Add you... one. Add one. Oh, 12. Okay. 12? Okay. You are going to move to uh, only moderately wounded. Uh, so I need you to roll me a uh, 2d6 because this is a vicious weapon. Yep. Two and a one. All right, you're fine. So you move to moderately wounded as its tail whips out and like cuffs you on the side. It's the vertebrae of it seem to be sharpened as it like cuts into your like side, opening a rent in you, but not hitting anything vital. Owie. Nethra. The situation on the ridge side is resolving itself as the flying bat creatures are being killed. You have a moment here. Would you like to try to help clear the bat creatures to get the artillery firing on this round? Or do you want to direct your fire towards the large dragon creature attacking your friends? Um. Ooh. No, she needs the she needs the artillery firing because if you doesn't matter if you guys kill the dragon if you get swarmed you're fucked. <laughs> and and the artillery is what's keeping you from getting swarmed at the moment. Um, so she's going to she's like the last one that she burned. Um, picks up the gun again and finds the next nearest target to just shoot the fuck out of this thing. Um. But she's also keeping an eye out for any other, like, commanders that might be, you know, because there's only more than one. I'm going to give you the the clearing the things. Roll me an awareness test for your turn to start figuring out where the next... Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's a 13 under a 50. You see behind another wave of the lockstep skeleton legions an individual bathed in amethyst light. Oh, is that motherfucking bitch back? Oh, oh, Nethra's taking this personally. I shot her in the face. She's supposed to stay dead. A storm of spirits around her. Oh, Nethra's like, all right, get those fire again. Get them off the, get them, make sure they don't swarm anybody on the dragon. The dragon's got to go, but that bitch. Snipers, make sure you follow her because she's going to be a pain. All right. Yeah, uh, the minute I get a chance, I'm shooting her in the face. Ravishaw, Again. What would you like to do on your turn as the dragon is bearing over you and uh, Rothbard? Who seems to be preparing something spell-wise, but the dragon appears to be careening down onto him at this moment what would you like to do let's try to draw his attention um uh it's one ap to reload right mm -hmm. uh one ap to called shot mm -hmm. i'm gonna do just shoot no aim all right so take a take an attack at a minus 10. It's a 99. A 99. Oh, Would you like no. to use a fortune point? You cannot. That is a crit <laughs> fail. Oh, damn it. Please roll me a d6. Two. Two? 
your as you go to pull the trigger, it just clicks and nothing happens. Anticlimactic. <laughs> I mean, hey, uh, ogres aren't great at upkeep of guns. Would you like to flavor anything else as this creature is moving down towards the uh, the wizard? Um, <clears throat> do you continue being where you are? Do you move towards the wizard? Do you move in between them? That I could probably take a little bit more of a licking than the wizard can, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move myself in that direction. You step between yourself and Rothbard as the dragon begins to bear down. Aldar, what are you doing? As you are on top of this dragon. Okay. I'm going to ventilate its skull. <laughs> Roll me an attack. Plus 10 since you're on top of it and it can't do much about you. Okay, so that is a 29 under a 71. So I think that connects. All right, here we go. Five. Six. Five. All right, what are we looking at? 18 plus whatever. Thirty even. Thirty even? Yep. Just misses the threshold there. Um all right. It is moving on down. Uh it is still alive as it's moving forward. And you see Aldar. You what weapon do you have again? I have a Morgenstern, a Morning Star. Yep, just <laughs> crashing down on the back of its skull, trying to end this thing. Gisela, is, uh, the dragon thing... is moving. Actually, I would like right? to do one more thing with my AP. Yes, please. I would like to pull a dirty trick. By all means. I want to blind it. Oh, roll me a door to trick. <laughs> all right. That is a that is a guile. So that is a twenty-six under a forty-six. All right. Um, this thing can no longer dodge, or parry, or counter spell. Um, it can take no defensive actions as it lumbers forward. Uh, what does Eldar do to blind this thing? Um, this is quite inelegant. Um, as uh. I think Aldar is now halfway out of its eye socket in one of its eyes. <laughs> you just beat yourself it's just into it. <laughs> As Aldar is just like inside its Alistair, like, you can't find a thing, I want you to die. <laughs> like Um Gisela. As this dragon moves forward, yeah. into your vision, you see left in its wake on the ground, struggling to rise, Count Volskin. Yeah, well, his ass is on the ground for at least another two more rounds. Um, so, Gisla is going to... I, I'm assuming it's going to take me AP. I don't want to go... I'm going to go ahead and... I wasn't really able to hit the dragon. I want, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go around. If it takes me an extra AP to walk around without getting an opportunity attack. Sigmar just called this asshole out and I'm feeling really compelled to go for him. So I'm gonna go do that, but like, I really don't want to get undead dragon in the face while I do it. So is that something I can like 
disengage. Yeah, you can you can slide off to the side and like move over to him. Now your spell keeps him prone for like multiple rounds, right? Three rounds. As the lightning dances over him and he like is jerking, you move up to him and he yeah. looks at you and says, lapdog of the false god. I don't only one him. of us is only one of us is groveling on the ground. Only and I'm gonna take my hammer and just bash uh, down me, at his roll head. Me, uh, that. Roll me an attack plus 20. He, by the way, totally interrupting his monologue. Oh, go, yes, no, I'm here let him for monologue it. there. He had a whole villain monologue that is going to come to a thudding end. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, this is a straight roll? Yep. Roll plus 20. Plus, I'm sorry, yeah, you're right. Plus 20, because he's on the ground. <gasps> that actually makes a big difference, because I was going to have to say I was going to re-roll it, because it was an 86 over an 85, because I'm still using my incantation. Oh, yeah, so the then... So it's totally fine with... Roll me, roll me 2d6, because he's prone. Sweet. Prone is excellent. Why have I not been doing prone more? I don't know. I just learned how to do it, apparently. <laughs> this is why everyone should, in combat, the first thing you do is go for a takedown. I can't do that, though. This is this is basic. Um, So there was a six and a three, so the six explodes. As does his skull. So a six and a three and a two. So that was nine, ten, eleven, plus thirteen. 18 for my willpower bonus plus three is 24. 11 and 13 is 24 plus three is 27. No, 13 was my willpower bonus plus three. Oh, okay. Sorry. The three. No, it's all right. I appreciate that. The three was already built in there. You want to know something fun? Yeah. That just barely exceeds to kill him. Yes. As he like snarls up at you being like lapdog of the false god the gilded leg <laughs> just skull <laughs> caves in as he's not wearing his helmet as you just cave that in and there is a shriek of energy out of him as your weapon is blessed and currently anointed anointed as there is a release that actually knocks you back as black like almost like um the the magical energy that comes out of him is so dark and impure and it almost has like a a weight to it as it comes out rushing out and dispersing in the air and his body twitches lays still and then dissolves inside the armor yeah, because Gisela's weapons bless multiple ways. It's both anointed and has imperial might, so that had to really hurt and was real gross. Gisela's gonna sort of like windmill back a little bit to like get away from the large plume of yuck. Remshaw, the dragon is bearing down on you. Behind you, Rothbard is gathering wind. And he just kind of says to you, uh, this doesn't this doesn't look good for you, son. Oh uh, see. Can you and, give uh, me three more seconds? <laughs> probably probably. Do you um, yeah, no, what go ahead. do you do? He'll uh, take out, uh, he'll drop the shotgun and then he'll take up uh, his, his the Beck de Corbin, kind of flourish it around once and brandish it for the only time this game with two hands. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and and like a defensive posture until uh, the very the closest moment and then he will lift his leg up and attempt to strike the dragon with a dwarf hanging out of one eye socket mind you 
opens its maw and lunges at you, looking to envelop you. And as the jaws start to close around, you slash down, taking teeth and jawbone with you. As it closes around, you shielding the wizard from this creature's attack as he brings his hand forward amber wind channeling through him coming out in an attack similar to the point of a spear that juts directly out and in an act of mercy as the dragon's claws begin to close around you it passes through remshaw and then down the dragon's gullet through its body spitting it And Remshaw, you maintain consciousness as the dragon collapses and ceases to move. What is the last thing that Remshaw does? He still, the grip around his weapon is still tight and, uh, He's, he becomes grateful because in a life mostly deprived of choice, this was, he, he chose to do this. So he has a weird smile on his face. Aldar, you're the nearest one as... Remshaw begins to fade out. Do you say anything to him? If you have no other place to go, may the ancestors welcome you into their hall. The life fades from Renshaw's eyes, laying in the jaws of this now inert dragon corpse. Gisela stands over the dead body of the vampire, and it's that moment that the artillery lights up again. The ground around all of you begins jumping and impacting as more undead begin to move in. Nethra, you see this figure towards the rear of the formation. You see the dragon fall. You see something clutched in its jaws, though I don't know if you have the time to identify precisely who or what it is. What are you doing? Um, she knows one of them fell. She doesn't isn't 100% sure which one, but she knows one of them did. And she's like, that motherfucking bitch doesn't get to take them. And they don't get to serve her. And she's a bit angry. And so once the guns start firing, she's going to do something entirely... Nethra. And a little bit crazy. Um, remembering, of course, this is the dwarf who suspended herself from a cannon gun while the tank was underway so that she could um, clean it. She's going to take one of the guns that's out of whichever gun, long gun is closest that was not going to fire this round because it was on cooldown. She's going to run the length of the barrel to get the extra distance that she needs and fire the rifle from the end of the barrel at this bitch and hit her in the face. That is the goal. All right. So now we have Tiny Dwarf on edge of cannon barrel to shoot a purple necromantic bitch. Hold on, sorry. Is this your your hand weapon or the the cannon? No, she's. I need the can. I need. Well, I mean, I could use the cannon, couldn't I? And the cannon's been blessed, right? We said the cannons were blessed. Yep. Oh, she's gonna take one of the cannons and re-aim it and use that to drop that on her 
All right, roll me a warfare test. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I would like to say the ancestors are with the dwarves. And they probably have picked up a uh, poor ogre who was very much in a um, artillerist at heart. And, um, because I rolled a one on that. Roll me damage. It's With a cannon, so you get 66. Cool. I'm just going to get more d6s because I has them. Um, does this also have the gunpowder re-rolling sixes and ones? It does. Though, I actually know with the siegecraft things I think are just a flat roll since you get six of them. I can okay. double check that, but honestly, there's there's a piece of information you need to find out when you pull this trigger. So roll me the damage. Uh, so that's three sixes and a one and a four. Uh, eighteen, uh, nineteen, twenty-three, plus well, whatever I'm supposed to have, have with that. Said goodbye to our ogre friend, both in game and in actuality. Um, um give me two seconds, and I will fix the. Yeah. As as that is happening. Nethra takes a cannon, angles it personally, taking that, pulling the cord. The cannon rips loose. There is a plume. And as there is the moment as it clears, the purple light returns. The swirling spirits, having come around her, the Aegis spell that she previously used mm -hmm. in her current state when she casts a spell at a generalist level and she succeeds, she crits and the Aegis spell provides immunity to range damage mm -hmm. as that cannonball disintegrates striking the wall of spirits around her on the field out of curiosity, did I take any of the little shits around her with that cannon? Uh, like some of the undead around her, yeah, get like yeah. just immolated in that blast. She's still As pissed about it, but General Vell up on the field with you, up on the field with you, going. That's it, isn't it? Right there. I shot her in the face once. I just did it again. Now you he understand. Turns to one of, he turns to one of the other ones as they're like cutting down the last of like the still twitching things. He says, send the signal. And you see them start raising flags and you see cavalry, horses in some instances, others riding half griffins without wings, cad in armor as they ride up on there, the royal demigriffs of the Imperium as they stand ready to charge down into it and they go and the general turns to you and says we're gonna have to close in and do this by hand if you wish you can stay up here <laughs> <laughs> and he turns to look back at the large tank and he says i'm going to take that yeah if you wanted to get a little bit closer it'd probably be it, and he just would you like a ride general as <laughs> this final wave of the undead crashes into the lines from both sides now <coughs> rising up on these hilltops crashing down as gisela and aldar you find yourselves standing amidst these skeletons from either side cavalry becomes starts charging in scattering the skeletons Nethra, if I may, mm -hmm. are you taking the tank down by your friends to grab them? Oh, yeah, because I can pilot, but I can't pilot and fire. So she's going to do a very Nethra thing um, and get it going because we're also at the top of the hill and say, um, <laughs> tank moving and just let it run and s put it in the general direction I need to go in, but I'm not actually piloting. I'm just like taking the 
brick off of the brake and firing at the same time to let it go downhill and Aldar and Gisela, you begin fighting some of the individual undead as they start coming up, climbing over the corpse of the uh, the dragon or moving around it. What's left of the Vermilion Spears forming into a new line. The, Middenheim, uh, the Middenheimers actually closing in to assist, having kind of like seen them make the stand against this dragon. You hear the clanking, cluttering sounds of the tank that brought you through the final stretches of the long retreat as you turn to see that old machine with Nether's head poking out over the top of it as it comes careening down the hill. What are the two of you doing? So Gisela has been doing flames of order once a round every round as they've been being swarmed as mm -hmm. often as she can possibly do it she is setting herself and everything around her on fire um can i tell that nethra is aiming for the necromancer like is that that the direction the tank is going yeah then Gisela will use her one AP every round to run that direction, and then the other three AP to just fire burst everything around her. And I will roll whatever Tom deems that I need to roll to fire burst crit. Roll me an incantation who... test to clear the way for this tank. And while you do that, Eldar, what are you doing as this tank starts rumbling by? Uh because apparently dwarves have no common sense. Uh, I am going to try and grab a hold to the side of this thing as it's passing me by and hitch a ride. All right, roll me no. an athletics test. Can, can I help? Because Nethra's totally leaning out the you side to do this. lean out and roll me a d10. And as that happens, Gisela, what did, how, what did you roll? I rolled a 31 under an 85. Yeah, you blast the area around this zombie dragon to just clear a path. I'm less concerned about clearing a path for the tank because it's a tank and more concerned about clearing a path for Gisela so that she's there with the tank at the end. So mm -hmm. the tank's not by itself. But yeah, we're going to run and set everything on fire that we possibly can from here to there. All right. Um, Aldar, what did you roll? Ancestor, yeah, send their regards. That was a one. You Legolas onto this <laughs> thing as you just like grab and like swing yourself in between the cannon and Nethra, like through the front hole, like the viewing, like the viewing area for gunners and such, like just slip right in, right into your seat, just like up. Oh. <laughs> I got it started for you. Hey, there's, there's just a loud grunt. <laughs> as you move past the area, the geese of the blue clear, and hit the line of undead, the ride gets real bumpy as you begin just like uh, cow catchering through lines of skeletons coming towards a small rise and you can see a ring partially of undead around a figure rising out of this. Now in blackened robes, you can see part of her head appears to be paler. One eye is milk white and has no pupil in it as she is a conduit for this energy the lady zara channeling the necromatic energies to continue to propel this arm uh, uh, uh army forward you see one of the demigriff knights actually fight her their way towards her and like begin to draw near she extends a hand and you see the rider twitch as like a smoke-like visage of them is pulled out of themselves and then pff, scattered like wind and the body just slumps and falls out of the saddle as the creature then begin the the demigriff like twirls like a cornered animal surrounded by undead and begins to like claw and fight so Gisela, you are coming up on foot we are going to go into initiative um Nethra is up first. We're going to go Nethra, Aldar, Gisela. 
And then, Zara, she has three undead moving in your direction. Mm-hmm. They are, if you wish to get into, like, fisticuffs with her, you are going to have to get through them. Yeah, but we're still in the tank, right? Yes, you are still in the tank. I am you not are assuming tank. this thing is stopping. Oh, you aren't, but we are. <laughs> I'm saying that, I'm sorry. Aldar and Nuthra are in the tank. Gisela is coming up on the tank. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, Nuthra had left a couple things in the tank because it was closer. So I still have four holy hand grenades. Um, I'm going to chuck these at... Mm. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, are you throwing it at her or at... Um... At uh, at the uh, creatures around her. I'm gonna take out the folks around her first. Okay. Right? Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll take them out first because we know that she's technically immune to ranged, and the holy hand grenades are ranged. But yeah, I'm. She's gonna chuck those at. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll me a uh, simple ranged to throw. That's a 22. 22 under, I'm assuming that's a 62. All right. Um, go ahead and roll me. Um, yeah. What's the damage for grenades? Um, it's a CB plus two plus okay, the so D6. Roll me, um, a D6. Yeah. Plus CB plus two and a D10. Okay. The D10 cannot explode, but you get the D10 for the whole So the game. 10 is a 10, and the D6 is a 6. So 16, and 5 is 21, plus 5 is um, 26. 26. It explodes. The three undead coming towards you were, were, are wearing um, armor. They are definitely animated corpses. They are on fire with a white flame. They shuffle forward. They are still there. They're fucked up, though. Um, oh, and she's going to lean out the lean around the counter and say, Oi, bitch, you looked prettier last time. I'll shoot off the other side of your face and then you'll match. I'm going to enjoy devouring your soul. If you eat me, I hope I give you indigestion. Dwarves cause you to give have the shits that never end. Ask a bunch of trolls, they'll tell you. Aldar, it is your turn. So he's driving this thing. Yep. I have a quick question. Yep. A vehicle. Yes. Does it count as ranged or melee? If you run it into something, it counts as melee. You do okay. not have the spiked wheels to do extra damage when you do that. I don't care. I have this feature that says that anything that is melee that I am wielding uh, is anointed. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as he is piloting, he is undoing his armor and he is beginning to mutter the Slayer's Oath. Um because yeah. he has failed Rimsaw. All right. Aldar, who are you hitting here? Because I would like Anything to, like, that's in the way. You know what? Roll me a piloting test to, like, Tokyo Drift into these three guys to just, like, pull this tank right up to the bottom of this necromancer and flatten her minions. The ancestors are with us. That was another one. <laughs> Roll me 2d6. Uh, and we're going to go plus your combat skill. That was a six and a five? Yep. Five and a one. Six. Six. Two. Aldar. You spin the wheel. The tank swerves and intersects all three. You don't even feel it. They're just gone. The tank slides to a stop. 
inches from the base of the little rise that Zara is standing on. Gisela, it is your turn. Yeah. <coughs> so none of her minions are in front of us. They are dead. <laughs> and based on what I would know of prayers, if I threw a comet at her, would that count as a ranged attack? Uh, I believe that since it is an incantation, it, what sort of damage does it do? Does it do D10s or D6s? D10s. The D10s are magic damage, so that would not count as ranged. That would be a magical attack. Well, she seems pretty powerful, and I remember the hitting the dragon with my hammer was not as effective as I would have liked it to have been. Mm -hmm. So... There's nobody else in range. I'm going to go ahead and throw another mini uh, comet. So grab another mini right. twin tail at. comet and throw it at her. Uh, 58 under an 85. Uh, well, 75 if we're doing minus 10 for combat. Roll that damage. Okay. Um. And this is the single target, so it's 3d10 plus my willpower bonus, but it won't explode. So... Okay, that's an 8, a 9, and a 3. Um, so 20 plus my willpower bonus is 30 points of damage and she's knocked prone for three turns. Gisela. Yeah. It's about time you did this, I suppose. Because how does this end? <laughs> so, again, she takes this tiny little I had plans, y'all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't Sigmar had anything. different plans. Sigmar had other plans. <laughs> how, Gisela, how does this end? <laughs> so she takes like this tiny little ball of flame that she like grabs off her armor and it grows into a twin tail comet that gets to be sort of frisbee size. <laughs> and she like softball pitches this thing at Mama Zara's head and there's absolutely no sense of satisfaction on the player's part here at all. Um, and it like, it hits her and sort of, I want it to like burn a hole through the Aegeus spell. Cause she's, at, she's outside the Aegeus spell. So it like burns a hole through the Aegeus spell and Comet like strikes her straight in the chest and like crackles and burns out through her chest. There's a look of smugness when this strikes her as her eyes like radiate with purple energy that turns to confusion and panic as a golden light begins to shine out of her mouth and then her eyes as the flame spreads up. And the last thing you hear is just a no, 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 as she burns. And, and as she's burning, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna say, Sigmar can see you now, bitch. And the last thing you hear is say, but she promised. As the necromancer burns, the skeletons on the front lines collapse the magic animating them, gone. The animated corpses become listless, no longer seeking the clo no longer seeking a goal. They just begin wandering. And if they come near something alive, they strike out. 
the force of the attack is broken. You see, as you turn to, uh, as you turn and look, the knights riding on horses of the enemy, the vampire clad in armor that hunted you, clashing with the mounted riders of the army. You see one that comes near you holding a sword and its shield as one of the demigriff riders bounds towards it and instead of engaging it, it just allows its mount to pounce, taking the rider off of its horse and landing atop it as the last vestiges of this army are beginning to be cleared away. The assault of the undead is broken. And you see an organism an, over the course of like the next 10 to 15, 20 minutes, an organized pack of the vampire riders break away, making with all haste away from the battle. Can I, sh I want to shoot them. You may take one last shot at them as they go turning the tank oh no no she i'm she's pulling herself out of the tank oh no. i was gonna let you fire with the cannon oh we can fire with the cannon we'll fire with the i was cannon. gonna say i was gonna give you the tank cannon the tank cannon I'll, I'll fire with the can which is warfare that's I mean, yeah. it doesn't say <clears throat> the ancestors really don't like vampires because <laughs> i you... rolled a one on the vampire oh, killing yes are you good with the the bounding shot that like takes their skeletal horses skeletal horses um skeletal horses the bounding cannonball from this goes through and removes the legs from their horses as you see this nicely bunched batches of targets go flying off their mounts we're playing we're playing down. we're playing bocce with a cannonball it's fine yes it's fine. It's a holy cannonball, too. I rolled on my D4 mm -hmm. precisely out of the entire army. One rider gets away. And she just has this moment where she then looks at Aldar and goes, I apologize, I meant to get all of them. That's um, just the first one that gets to die next time. This is going to move us towards our slightly epilogue phase as now begins the after battle sequence. I'm more interested in what you all are doing than the world. So if you will, I'd like to start with Gisela. Gisela, in the aftermath of the battle, it can be a day or two if you wish more than that if you want. What does Gisela do? Of course you went to me first because I was trying to talk to you out of chat to figure out how much of this I was going to say and how much of this you were going to say. Do you um, want to bounce someone else first or do you want to take it? No, it's fine. Okay. Because you already went in here. Um, so the very first thing is Gisela does is she will not leave the battlefield while there are people still trying to kill even if we're killing individual undead they're without direction she is staying on the battlefield and doing that mm -hmm. once that is done and i already talked to billy and he said i could do what i wanted so um she's going to go back to Ramshaw and she's going to make sure that she arranges for him to be buried that she arranges for him to be buried in a proper way she's not going to necessarily insist on a sigmarite location because she knows that's not necessarily where he was going but she's gonna take because she hasn't found a good place to use it yet so she's gonna take this like p 
piece of wood out of her bag that's got the miracle Sigmar symbol on it. And she's going to get his name inscribed on it and use that as his headstone. Um, and, and just hope that as we continue to deal with whatever this is, that whatever magic Sigmar had that was able to make this is able to keep him safe and in his grave. Tell me a incantation test plus 20 since you have a lot of time here. Yeah. Can I use a fortune point? Yes, you may. We have them. I think plus 20 still might have got it because I think 20 was technically 105, so I couldn't fail, but I was still real uncomfortable with the 95 I originally rolled. What's your incantation regular? 85 yeah then you're fine you didn't need a fortune point um but i was real uncomfortable with the 95 i originally rolled okay you <laughs> remshaw's grave do you put it on the battlefield or do you put it in no i want it to be in a place where the where the rest of the dead from the battle are getting buried i want it to be in a place of holy ground in a place that is sacred not well, in this random ass place what makes it holy ground and what makes it a sacred place is in fact the gravestone that you leave for remshaw as in this memorial for those who fell in this first battle against the undead and the marker left for remshaw on top of his grave becomes hallowed ground. And for centuries after this, undead cannot tread onto this battlefield again. And those who come and pay respects find themselves with good fortune for weeks afterwards. It becomes a folklore that those seeking said good fortune should come here and say a prayer to Sigmar at the gravestone of the wooden comet or hammer. Comet. Does not it was seem, a comet. Yeah, it was a comet that doesn't seem to age. Eldar, what do you do oh, in the... I, sorry, the, I was going to say the only other thing is that even days on... Gisela still has the little glow. She never loses that. And that was the last thing. Eldar, what do you do in the days following the battle? So, the armor goes away. Uh, the kit goes away. It is All the, the myriad weapons he carries, most of those go away. It is now two mortuary slots on his kit. A backpack, uh, simple clothes, uh, and A book. And it has two ways of reading it. You read it forward, it's all the people he's failed. You read it backwards, it's all the persons he wants to grudge against. He's not with the military. He'll have, if people want to join him, you're more than welcome, but he's just going on things from here. Haldar, as you ritualistically take this Slayer's Oath and begin to move off, a figure on the edge of the camp is awaiting you. Tall, wide-brimmed hat. 
the Comet of Sigmar hanging around their waist, a brace of pistols, a poxmarked scar on the side of their face. As an inquisitor eyes you up and down, says, Oi, you. I you want to kill vampires. I'd love to kill vampires. Good. Then come with me. We're heading south. I seems to be the way the wind's blowing. And as Eldar sets off with an Inquisitor bound for what was Count Volskin's lands, Nethra, what are you doing? So Nethra has a odd thought in her head. She'll, uh, very politely, after the battle, and the fact that we killed a necromancer, and a dragon, and a vampire, and then I killed a bunch more vampires that were trying to get out, ask the, um, general, yeah. um, very politely, if, uh, I can has this, um, repurposed um, tank, please, and thank you. You can be the entire artillery division if you fucking want it. No, I just want this one. Um, I have a few friends who we really kind of have a thing about leaving possible people that could come back and kill us alive. You know, it's a thing. Um, so I'm gonna take the tank and about oh, all of those leftover last cannonballs. The General Vell kind of sits back in the tent in the immediate aftermath of the battle, like, still sweating and, like, wearing his armor. And it's um, like, and, and, and she'll see that and she'll hand him the flask. It doesn't have water in it, but, you know, something... He takes a long swig and he says, as far as I'm concerned, that tank was yours to begin with. Hey, thank you very kindly. I appreciate it. Um, so... Just to let you know what I'm officially doing so you can't claim desertion at any point. I'm going to take this tank. I'm going to go after my friend who apparently just fell in with a bunch of people with crazy hats. Because, <sighs> dude, never trust people with crazy hats. Um, and he didn't come for me with the, the weapons. I'm feeling hurt. And we're going to go kill a bunch of vampires. Is that cool with you? I don't think we'll be all that far behind you. Cool, I'll make a big hole for you. You wouldn't be able to have a problem. Um, also, probably gonna burn a couple more things I come across. By all means. I'll take that as official permission then. Um, and she's going to take the tank and literally have this moment, because I want this shot, and I don't want to know what's going to happen, but I want this shot. Of down the road, in the distance, there's Aldar and the Inquisitor going down the road towards the vampires, and then the tank coming up behind them, and you just see Nethra's head out the side going, Oi! You want to ride, or you want to walk the rest of the way? And she doesn't, like, the answer is... <laughs> As... An inquisitorial party riding a tank putts off on the road to Stalbrook. The first peace talks between the North and the South, the Altdorfians and the Middenheimans, the Sigmarites and the Ulricans, begins as the end of the 20 year civil war comes and the beginning of the first vampire war emerges as a joint force is dispatched to the once loyal lands of Count Volskin, now unknown to who they rule, shrouded in shadow. At the head of the first army, a gleaming 
glowing visage and armor striding out in front of an army standing ready to lay siege to one of the fortresses one of the river fortresses Gisela clad in armor leading the forces of Sigmar and Ulrich and Tal and the entire pantheon united against the forces of undeath Preparing to push towards Castle Drakehoff and the very heart of undeath in the Empire. That is where our campaign will come to a close. And uh, I think I'll hand it back to Prax for everyone to go around the horn and see how everyone's doing. Yeah, we should we should do that. We'll go around. We'll see how's everybody doing. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a Billy, but Billy had an epic death scene, which was great. So. Uh, snaps for billy's epic death scene um i feel like we should go around we'll we'll get to our gm last so he can have a minute um but uh i feel like we should maybe check in with our uh new, new slayer uh vampire hunter because that's a great combination at all times right pope uh again he dwarves through and through uh that wasn't supposed to be his day but it was and so the oath is taken um but hey everybody hope you're hope we'll be on twitter hope we'll be on twitch and lurking all your streams uh this has been amazing uh and i am just kind of floored with how everything played out uh for first business, then pleasure. If you want to see more of this silly face, you get a number of opportunities throughout the week. Mostly on this channel, because I follow Prax around like a pub puppy. Um, so for the one place you can find me that isn't here, uh, on Mondays over on Wandering DM, uh, we do the opposite side of the vampire war with Montreal by night. Uh, far more modern and just as destructive. Uh, so we'd love to have you there oh, at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on Monday nights. Otherwise, I will let Prax plug all the wonderful things that are happening here on the channel. Um, and yeah, Doe, as always, it is an absolute delight playing with these people. Billy, masterful as always, even with the, the tight window that we play. Um, just a, a, a simple character that absolutely pulls at the heartstrings and again motherfucker did it again uh if you want to understand why he did it again go on youtube and look up um a black rose bloom and then you'll understand um and then uh yeah brex being uh the artillery wielding B.A. Baracus of of Dwarven Zweihander. Uh I am all here for. And uh definitely uh need to have somewhere uh Nethro is my co-pilot. Um and we need to get a sticker made or something like a pull like no, uh, the title no, no the the title should be is Nethro isn't shotgun. Nethro's got shotgun. Okay. But that needs to go like on my PC tower somewhere. Um, and yeah, and then Gusela, uh, absolute powerhouse. Um, I, 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 I'm definitely leaving this in your hands, Tom, but I would say Prophet of Sigmar sounds like a proper title. I think the term we were using for the new tier was Avatar. Avatar of Sigmar was uh, how she we were going. She basically became with... Joan of Arc of Sigmar. Yeah. There. At the uh, okay, of okay, so in in, in the, the the other book that Aldar might actually write um, has the Slayers have a responsibility. First, it's the Book of Grudges, uh, and then they usually keep a journal because that's how Slayers know how to become Slayers. Uh, and as for the journal, I think the title is going to be the eventually becomes the Hand of Sigma. Um, 
will be the the reference for these will have and yeah no this and tom this absolutely amazing uh and really the first time i've spent a significant period with with spyhander and you made it very much come alive and feel feel like it had meaning Thanks. oftentimes a lot of these mud blood and shit games are while absolutely a blast they don't necessarily have the teeth that they should and you made sure even with our incredible luck that it always felt like we were up against it and we've an amazing tale and thank all of you who have been with us on this amazing journey where live five youtube stories nothing without its audience you're much part of this we are thank you for being here till next time folks take care of yourselves long enough. see you around well that'll be great uh I guess we have to go to the Avatar Sigmar, because I guess Sigmar really, really loves uh, Gisela. I want an invitation to the wedding. I <laughs> I think I belong on Gisela's side of the church. I'm definitely not a groom, bride's side, not groom's side. It's fine. Yeah. Well... There's some backstory there that we're not going to get into because I know Tom likes to save a lot of those reveals for future campaigns along. Look, if I ever get to do an Azazel campaign, <laughs> we'll bring Gisela back in because the, yeah, the, yeah. the, the, the Slaneshi demon who like used to be Sigmar's best friend betrayed him and murdered his wife is like too juicy of a demon to not bring in at some point. So there, there are some, uh, there were some back, I'm not going to lie, there were some backstory discussions. There are some backstory there. I am not going to get into that because I know that Tom likes to save those drops for future campaigns. Um, so we're not really going to get into it more right now than Gisela is an avatar for Sigmar. Um, outside of that, which was a lot of fun and was really great to see some um, characters that I knew from home games and other places pop back up. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many people out here have watched it previously, but if you haven't watched Wild and Chaotic on what is it now? Weave the it's tail. Weave the tail. Weave now. the tail now. It used to be encounter role play. It now used to be encounter role play. It is now weave the tail. Um, Mama Zara's origin and uh, Laura's previous grudge with her that I was trying real hard not to necessarily let bleed over into Gisela, but I got to let it uh, work both ways. That's um, if you don't know where that started, that's a good thing to check out um and that made me real happy tonight that we got to uh fix that um i think that's most all of it uh the only thing i would have to say is that barring any catastrophic events tom and i should be on master of the game this weekend playing D &D. don't tempt <laughs> Bait, my goodness it's been like the last three months something's come up so i feel like it's literally, okay to like stay. happily happily everyone's okay but like literally our last game was canceled on uh because of a major car accident for yeah. a player like, everyone everyone's okay. fine but like everyone is fine been having a rough go with this game but I think we've uh, promoted this game like three times and it hasn't happened most of them because of one thing or another. So barring any catastrophic events, Tom and I will be on Master of the Game this weekend playing D&D &D and having YouTube. lots of fun. Master of the Game YouTube. Sorry. Well, I... Mm. Yeah, no, I... Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but there is a distinction. It's not Twitch. It's YouTube. Um. Nope, that was it. Um, that was all. 
Well, that's a lots of very important things. Uh, hey, Tom, how are you? I'm good. I'm uh, I'm really happy that we we came to a conclusion there, and that uh, I've been meaning to do this story for quite some time, as it it continues the story. It furthers the story of Wild and Chaotic as as undeath starts coming into this world. And uh, it was a lot of fun to throw the party into that event. And then as like make the party change it, make the party have meaning in that as um, y'all stopped it from being utterly catastrophic. Um, and I deeply look forward to seeing where this world goes next in the future as um yeah we had a if if chai if you're out there um mama zara came to a pretty dramatic after her fall to necromancy that was a pretty dramatic way to a bring undeath into the world and then go out um as one of my favorite things to do is after a campaign concludes make the PCs, NPCs in the world, major world shaking NPCs, which we definitely got three of in this. As uh, Nethra has a tank, uh, Aldar is a slayer running with a um, with a Inquisitor, and now Gisela is a major holy leader, maybe leading a, a, a new sect of the cult of Sigmar, specifically with a grudge against undeath. We'll see. Um, but thank you all for playing. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I finally found something in this last game that lasted more than one round of combat against you all. <laughs> that undead dragon actually did some stuff. <laughs> yes, it did. Yes, it did. Hashtag too soon. Um, uh, but no, this was a lot of fun. Thank you, Tom. Um, hey, all, you know me. I'm at your on that on Twitter. Proxyworth has me for you. See me out here on Twitch. Thank you for being here. Thank you, players, for doing this. Thank you, Tom, for throwing this uh, game for us. I really enjoyed every minute of it. Um, I was not expecting the dice to roll quite so well for me on this game, and it, they rolled fantastically. Um, uh, I'm loving, like, I loved the story that we got, but I also love the, like, little bits of the future that we saw of what's going to happen, because now Nethra has permission to burn as much shit as she wants. I mean, Sylvania is officially banished from the Empire, like, it's on now. Like, bad war is approved. Burn that, gonna burn that, him gonna They're shoot They're already face. dead, so like, go It don't wild. matter. <laughs> exactly, it don't matter, it's fine. Um, it's, it, I loved every minute of it. I loved all the character interactions. I loved Gisela and Nethra never quite getting to see eye to eye on the religion thing, but still being friends, mostly. Um, at least on Nethra's side. Um, don't worry. I have years and years and years to convert you. It doesn't have to be a slow, it doesn't have to be a quick thing. I will wear you down eventually. I think I'll outlive you. Um, I mean, it's just pure age. I think Dwarf outlives you. Um, I don't know. Sigmar really likes her. <laughs> yeah. Look, I didn't get an invitation to the wedding. I'll just put it this way. I'd die before you convert me. <laughs> there's that. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Apparently there's a whole like age after this where I can convert you in the in-between time and you can show back up converted. We need to talk to the ancestors about this. No, this yeah, is- Yeah, no, no, this ain't this is, right. <laughs> this is, this is, this is like a, mm -mm. That thing that happens in a certain religion where they can actually go through the ancestry and baptize their dead relatives in that particular religion. Oh. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. That's the thing I hate. But um, I loved every minute of this. This was a lot of fun. I loved our ogre friend who was unfortunately had an epic death, but whatever, but lived to a wonderful story. Um, and I... Loved every minute of this. Thank you so much. Um, 
as for me, well, you can find us back here on Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern for A Song of Agapius Fortune, where Pope is playing, unfortunately, um, a very put-upon wizard who, I guess, is now experiencing some complicated emotions. He was feeling anger and then questions got answered and now he's not feeling so much anger anymore. I think, wh wh what was that emotion you were feeling there, Pope? I'm sorry, I, I missed it earlier. Anger still exists. It just has guilt now. Yeah, yeah, guilt. There's guilt in that anger. Um, And then um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on with that. So check that out. Um. If you haven't, if you missed out on any of it, you want to check it out, well, there's the YouTube. It exists. It's a thing. It, it, I'm even going to put the link in chat where all of the VODs, including this one, go. Um, Sunday, back with season four, episode three of Witcher Roads Home, and we are in Mahakam. There are more dwarves. There was a necrophage attack on an unfortunate dwarf's forge. There's now a hole in his wall. And his chest. <laughs> yeah, sucking chest wounds are a problem. Um, that is a thing. And a, a, a very interesting um, uh, druid whose um, line of, yes, you put your child, y y he puts his child on his shoulders because that's what you do when you like your children. Um, you know, that's a statement that was made. Um, that's on Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And then I'll be over with Pope on Wandering DM on, uh, Monday night, 8.45-ish, uh, for more, uh, Montreal by night, where I would like to remind everybody sitting at home that the Ravnos, it's not the Ravnos's fault, and I am the clean, the Ravnos is the cleanup crew. Those two facts you need to know. Number one, not the Ravnos's fault, and number two, Ravnos is your cleanup crew. Thank you. This will be great. Um, but other than that, check my Twitter because post where I'm going to be and all the fun, wonderful, fabulous folks like these people that I get to hang out with and play games and tell stories with. Um, additionally, you might notice now that there's a new button. Um, it should have gone live. It may not have. Hold on. I just suddenly realized it may not have gone officially live on the Twitch. I'll fix that. Um, I have a Ko-Fi now. Apparently that's a thing that people do, and I'm hashtag pro streamer, and I appreciate each and every one of you who donates and gives everything to that. I, I go put try to put it back into stuff like this. Um, and just because Pope is asking for it, I'm, am I sitting here looking at how you just set up the merchandising on Streamlabs? Yes, yes I am. So that might be a thing that happens in the future, but I need to talk to some people first. Um, so keep your eyes peeled. Things might be happening. Um, but I love each and every one of you, and I appreciate each and every one of you. But we should share that love with the other people in the world, because, you know, um, Lindy's still up, and they're doing their yeah. finale tonight, so... It's their finale as well, yeah. We're gonna go send some love to Lindy. All right, everybody. Until next time.